Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I thought I'd start the stream a little bit earlier today. Um, I've basically got everything set up pretty prepared um, before I've started the stream. Usually, usually when I get these things started, I've got a few, you know, I've forgotten a bit of, uh, you know, a tube of gouache or something like that. But um, anyway, really happy that you are all here. If you're, um, you know, whether it's, uh, it's the evening or the morning for you, you're definitely in for a treat today. I'm going to be doing three different scenes. And um, look, let's see if I get through it. I, I reckon I'll be able to get through all three. Um, but we're do, doing a couple of line and wash scenes to kind of warm up with, and then we're going to go through and do this scene of uh, Cinque Terre, and I hope that's how you pronounce it. Um, I've actually done a painting of this in the past, and uh, this is kind of what it looks like, or this is it basically, but I'll try to do it a little bit different, maybe exaggerate those shadows a bit more and add a bit more detail. So this one was done, a f I don't know how long ago, probably eight months, maybe a year ago. So it's always good to change things up and, and tackle a, a reference picture in a slightly different way. But um, this reference is a, a bit different from the last one I've used anyway. If you're watching along, um, pop, your, pop your name in the chats and let me know how you're going today. I would love to hear where you're watching from. I can see there's a few people on uh, YouTube, but it's Quite a few on um, on Facebook. So if you're around, uh, let me know how you're you're going. Put your name in the in the chats and let me know. Um, yeah, if if you have any questions before we get started. Uh, morning, Tony. Good to see you again. Uh, what time's it for you over there? Hopefully this is a this is a little bit better because I know last time I last week I streamed I think about halfway through about to um, about to go to bed or something. Or maybe someone else. We've got um, Angel, Angel Bondadora from Singapore. It's good to see you, uh, Angel. And is this your first time here? I think I've, I'm not sure if I've seen you uh, before, but um, good to have you here. And Philip, of course, we've got Philip here again. Um, one of the, the usual suspects. <laughs> so... It's 6 p.m. and uh, before we get started, uh, yeah, I thought I'll just show you if, uh, a little quick run through of this sketchbook. Now, this sketchbook, believe it or not, something that I put together myself. I did a, I did get a bit of help for, um, with the stitching, but basically I just used an entire sheet of watercolor paper. So it's you know it's a bit of a, a bit of a shoddy sort of job, but it does the trick. I've got a couple bits of cardboard. And um, the inside looks a lot better. And it's basically just a whole sheet of watercolor paper that I've torn down um, lengthways to get these uh, 14, it's 14 or 16 sheet, uh, 16 pages, depending if you count the first and the last page, I've sort of just glued them on some cardboard. But you've seen, I know those of you who've watched along have seen me use this sketchbook and do quite a few demonstrations in there. It's a great little way um, to put these together. I'm actually waiting for uh, one of my Etcher sketchbooks to arrive in the mail, the perfect sketchbook, that's what they call it. So in the meanwhile, I'm going to keep putting these together to um, get me through because I just love painting and drawing and sketchbooks. Um, just makes things a lot easier. I don't need to tape down any pages or anything like that. Sometimes I keep these little clips here. So, you know, when you're painting, it's good to just clip down a corner or here and there so that the paper doesn't move around, um, especially if it starts curling and things like that as well. It's a good, uh, it's a good little trick. Um, you know, here's a couple others that I did, some demonstrations for those of you who saw. Um, you know, that was from the last one, I think, of Mykonos. And this one I did the other day. This took me about maybe half an hour to, to do. I was quite happy with that. It's basically a... Um, just a pure watercolor version of that other uh, Santorini scene that I did. I just wanted to see what it looked like, and uh, I was really quite interested in this shadow here, passed over to the left. So that's about it. I've got two more pages left. Um, that's the other uh, France Paris scene. I've got this page, and I've got this page. So that's what I'm planning to use um, to finish off this sketchbook. So 
you like the, my little my little introductory tour, um, sketchbook tour. Now, I'm probably going to take a break, a quick break in between um, these demonstrations as well, just depending on how how I feel. I probably probably need to get a drink or something or maybe get something to eat, but we'll see how we, we go. I thought I'd start this one a little bit earlier um, because I know for some of you it's probably um, super late. So firstly, I'd just like to thank... Um, I'd just like to thank Ellen. So Ellen Whitney, she was the one that um, suggested to to do this scene of, of Cinque Terra. So um, that's the last painting that I'll do, you know, at the right at the end. So um, always love getting suggestions um, from you guys who uh, that are watching and like to cater to that as well. If there's something that you'd like to see, Shanolin Martinez also suggested that night scene of uh, sorry, it was Ellen. Ellen suggested Holstadt, Austria as well, but Shanolin said that she wanted to see a night scene. So I thought, hey, let's combine them together. We'll do both um, at the same time. So um, we've got Mona. I'm just going through the chats. Mona Lunston again. Good to see you. And uh, 10 a.m. Fantastic. So it's, it's quite a quite a um, good time for you. Um, let's have a look. We've got... In Facebook, we've got Margaret, Margaret McFadden from Melbourne. Good to see you, Margaret. And I think you, uh, if I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you've joined my Patreon last week. So thank you um, for joining and uh, for watching as well. And uh, I did see one of your your um, your line wash sketches the other day. So well done. Got Naomi. Naomi uh, Maguera from Hong Kong. Welcome, Naomi. I've also got Lewis Reed from Seattle. Um, we've got uh, Lana Tushman from Maryland, um, US. We've got Lillian Van uh, Heerwarden um, from Thailand, and it's 2 p.m. for you. Fantastic. So also a, a decent time. We've got Tanvir uh, Zira from Pakistan. Um, welcome Tanvir. Some new names here. Um, I haven't, you know, I haven't um, heard of all of you yet, but it's good because you know having some of these at a different time just means that I can get to other um, people who are in areas which are, um, yeah, it's just you know get to other people. I don't know what I'm going on about. Um, so. Tony, Tony says, not sure how long I can watch this morning. Depends on when, when my dog starts pestering for the morning walk. <laughs> okay, um, how um, however long you stay is fine. Tony, um, happy you're here. Got Nathalie, Nathalie T uh, Chitucci. Um, welcome, Nathalie. Good to see you again. And we've also got Lindsay in uh, on YouTube. So um, Lindsay's watching on YouTube today. Um, which is also an option. Uh, I sort of stream to both platforms because I know for some people it's easier to watch on Facebook. I probably prefer just to stream to one because it's just easier to keep track of everything. But um, for now, I'll keep doing it on, on both. Um, just a little heads up as well. Last time when I was doing this stream, I did have some issues, some technical issues with the um, the computer, it just uh, shut down and froze on me a couple of times. I don't know if it's going to do this again uh, this time round. So you might um, get a, a moment where uh, the signal just cuts out. So just hang in there if it does. I've got a backup computer set up today um, so that um, in case that happens, um, in case that happens, I can reconnect again. So just a little heads up um if you're thinking that i've just disappeared or something like that i'm still here uh it's, it's just that i did have some technical issues last time i don't know what's going on with my laptop so um i've posted and i've posted and uh, pinned a comment uh in the in the discussion if you're on facebook and also in, in the chats on on youtube you should be able to see it it's got the reference photos in there we're going to start with something a, a little bit more easier first, and then we're going to move on to that um, barn house, that farmhouse kind of scene. That's from New South Wales. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where. I, I can't remember, but I thought that was a nice um, medium level difficulty, you know, kind of scene to tackle. And then we've got the big one at the end. 
Okay, so I'm really I'm going to get started straight into it and um, treat these first two as more of a exercise, just more of a, a warm up. Okay, don't be too worried about getting in that reference picture exactly, unless you you know unless you want to, of course, um, put in more effort into it. But I'm going going to try to do these a little quicker, um, just a little bit quicker today. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let me just, now I do have the reference picture in the top right hand corner, but I will actually reduce the size of it a little bit just so that you guys can see. Um, actually, you know what I'll do, I'll move it here to the left hand side. I can use this program. There we go. That's a bit easier. Um, so you can see the entire sheet of paper. So, um, same deal as before, I've got three uniball pens here, they're just ink, liquid ink pens. This one's 0.5, this one's 0.38, and this one's 0.7. Okay, I'm probably just going to use the 0.5 and the 0.7 um, to do these sketches. It's just a, a, a bit easier, and I, and I find the 0.38, maybe for stuff in the, in the distance, in the far distance, it works um, quite well, but otherwise I don't use it all that much. So bear with me, I'm just going to open up those reference, uh, my, my reference photograph for this first scene. And it's an interesting, it's an interesting little scene here. We've got um, a girl and she's uh, basically, you know, stopped um, somewhere. It looks like she's in a park or near a pond. And um, yeah, just kind of stopped on a on a bike. So just there's a few elements here that we can practice. We can obviously the more detailed stuff like the bike. We've got a figure, and we've got a couple of trees, bit of bit of land, and some softer trees in the background. Um, so I think this would this would be a nice um, a nice little uh, scene to to get started with. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and um, get cracking. I'm just gonna go check again, just one one last time. I'll just have a quick check of the, the chats to see what's going on. Um, it's it's a bit difficult kind of monitoring all the, all the chats at the same time. Um, but I do my best, yeah? So you might find that I, I may not get back to you until a bit later, but you know, just do your best um, to to comment in terms of if you've got any questions, just leave a question there, and I will get back to you as soon as I as soon as I can. Okay, so we've got um, what have we got here? Oh, I'm just going to have to delete a few of these. The, the, you know, as this as these events have started of doing these more often, I get uh, people just spamming. Um, spamming some weird links and things in there so here i am i'm just going to have to delete off some of these links um so yeah if they're not links from me just don't click on them guys um unfortunately uh unfortunately this type of stuff can happen but you know what the show show goes on we've got um tan tan ting from singapore how are you going tan Good, good to good to meet you. My parents are, are from Singapore. I was born over here. I'm um, actually in Perth, so I go back every now and then. But it, it's been a while since I've been back. So welcome, RC, RC, good, good to see you. Um, we've got uh, from Thailand and Lucia, Lucia Lupu from Romania. Welcome, Lucia. And um, Tony is saying that he can't find the link to the reference. Uh, your pin comment just goes to the stream or uh, to Facebook. Okay. Hmm. Um, alrighty. So oh, there, there is a, um, let me just, let me just double check that one, Tony, this. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. You're probably going to have to. There's a yeah. If you click on that link and then you click on discussion, it's sort of at the top, just underneath where the video is playing. There's a tab that says discussion. It will be it will be right there. Uh, I'll I'll have to think of a better way to put these on um, next time, uh, maybe in separate links or something like that. Make it easier for you. Um, yeah. So look, we're gonna get on. We're gonna we're gonna get on with with things. Um, 
and uh, go ahead and get started now. I think I've been babbling for, for a bit. A chock, uh, nice to see you here, chock. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, there's some posts on, on yeah, some, um, some spammy links going on on my page as well. That's okay. I'll have to deal with them later. All right. Let's get let's get cracking. Um, so this is a pretty fun scene. I like this one. Um, I'm going to start with the point seven. If you get both the pens, let's get both the pens and draw a little line um, where we where that the feet are. That's about where I, I just wanted to uh, to divide the page just with the line. It's really up to you how where you want to put that line. Um, I'm going to put it around about here, which is. I mean, it's not ex exactly a third, just below, probably say below a third of the way through the page. Um, there's some rocks and things here as well that we can have a play around. And the thing, the cool thing with rocks is that they have um, sharp sort of, a lot of them have these jagged edges and um, bits and pieces, you know, like this kind of darker, darker bits and lighter, lighter sort of bits as well. So it's um, easy to get in these abstract shapes. Um, and and you don't have to copy these rocks exactly because rocks come in all shapes and sizes. So one thing that I haven't quite figured out yet here is the light source. Um, I'm thinking it's it's probably it's coming from the right hand side. It's very very uh, yeah very very subtle from the right hand side. Um, so it's it's kind of like top right reflecting off a lot of these rocks. Um, and then leaving a bit of light on top like that. So um, that's all I'm doing. I'm just getting in a, a little bit of rubble over here. Now, in terms of these trees, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and just draw one going up like this. And these, you know, if you ever get out these days, if you ever get out, if you're um, not in lockdown like us here in, in Melbourne, um, you can do these sketches very, very quickly. In person and it's quite fun because uh, you're forced or it's fun and exciting at the same time it can be a bit uh, nerve-wracking for some of you but it forces you to draw quickly and um, get shapes in without overworking things so the main thing here I've just I've just worked on that tree I've just put in a bit of that tree and you, you know we've got also some little bits and pieces coming off the tree. We've got these kind of uh, smaller branches and things, you know, coming off the side like that. Another thing we can do, I know there's not really any um, leaves and things on this tree, but that's something you can put in up as well. So I'm actually just thinking whether I want to do that or not, um, only because there's so many branches and little offshoots and things coming off that I think if I sort of do too much of this it's all just going to be line work but the tree goes out of the scene you can see it sort of come up the top there like that so another thing i'll do is just hatch which is basically draw a bunch of lines uh, running down that left side of the tree like this okay and that way we can indicate the light um, coming in on the right hand side so that's a really uh, basic basic sort of tree um and then we've got, uh, let's do this other tree first. I'm trying to look at the most simple stuff to do, yeah? So we're going to go through do this one. Um, there's not any rocks here. There's not any rocks here. That's okay. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and, and put in something like uh, here. Look, the tree comes up. It's just, so here's the main trunk like this, okay? And then you've got a middle section there, like a big branch going up, and then you've got another one. A lot of it's obscured actually by, uh, you know, other branches and things going through. So this is um, looks to be kind of winter, maybe winter scene or um, late fall kind of scene. So um, yeah, there's not much, not much activity going on with this tree. But um, there's something I I quite like about these branches i don't know exactly what it was but um you know when you see trees that just have such um you know, just all these little branches and bits and pieces they're kind of like these fractal fractal like um structures uh i don't know just i'm just just like them so i can get really drawn in and 
but the main thing is just to get in that big branch um the, sorry the, the the branch the big uh, trunk get that in first and once you've got that big shape in you can go ahead and you can play around and get the smaller ones in after and who's to say that you can't do some of this stuff later yeah in terms of you can get some of this detail in once the once you've finished actually painting it um it's another technique people ask me that question all the time do i have to uh do i have to draw everything in or can i wait till later and draw some of it in you can absolutely do that um i do this because it just gives me for, for my style it tends to give me a bit more structure um makes it easier for me when I paint because I want the paint to be as much of a feature as well. So same thing goes uh, here on this side. Um, we're going to just hatch down the side of the, 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 um, the trunk. Let me just get in a few more branches and notice the way I'm drawing these branches as well. You've got one, say we've got a, uh, you know, a one that's coming out around on this angle and then this will split into two like that. You'll find that's a common pattern. It'll split into two, or there might be three, um, but one always splits into at least two, especially further down, and then those split into further uh, segments as well. So it, it's almost like, um, you know, when you're drawing things like, I don't know what else you could compare it to, like veins or um, uh, neurons and things like that. Uh, has that sort of repeating structure on both the macro and and the microscopic, maybe not microscopic level, but you know the the the, the macro and the and the micro level, um, and a little a few lines here on the left side of the trunk as well will do good, do you quite good. Um, you know another thing, some of these branches may be pretty dark darker than others so you can also go in there and just color in some of them a bit just like that okay um and i kind of now compare these two let's have a look is this one is this one looking out of place so is it looking too kind of um shriveled over on this side or does it i think it needs a bit more you know it's up to you you know just use that reference and play around with it until you're happy with it you know, trees come in all shapes and sizes, and there's not a specific way to, to do all this. But, um, you know, again, using the, the reference to guide you is, will go a long, uh, really go a long way. So a um, bit of that shrubs, uh, shrubs and things sticking out of the ground here. This thing here, this tree, um, this tree trunk, this enormous tree trunk here, I don't know if I really want that there. It um, the shape of that is just too. Uh, I don't know. It's just too. It's too complicated, and uh, you know, it might look too obscure if we put it in there. What we can do though is we can change the shape of the tree trunk. So we can have like kind of a circle there, and then um, maybe have a bit of that come out like that. It looks like a trunk, or it could be a who knows, like a little bench or something here in the park. A um, little, little, bit of, little bit of something like that. Um, and uh, sorry guys, I'm just going to um, have to delete some of these other comments again. There's a lot of spam uh, coming through. I've got to get rid of it. Um, so, and Tony's asking, yeah, well, why we're on a good thing? Uh, yeah, look, so what these people, what these people do when they're like spamming these links, um, the, the the links lead to fake versions of events um, and places where you know people people give their credit, you know, they ask you for credit card details, all that kind of stuff. So never, you know, if you're on if you're online, just be very careful where you know about entering in any details or logging into other websites if they ask you for any personal information. I mean, that's. Um, yeah, just something to keep in mind. No, no matter what, no matter what you're doing, um, it's you know every every uh, person who runs these sort of events or or, or or runs like an online community has to deal with these people on a, a consistent basis. 
um, you know, in that big group that I run, Watercolor Beginners, you know, it's it's a constant issue where every day um, there's just people posting things that shouldn't be posted, um, links that lead off um, to some other a dodgy website, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I just that's something that I do all the time. It's more of a safety, more of a safety thing, and and um, more a bit of an annoying uh, situation I have to deal with. It just causes more work. But um, you know, I want to make sure that I just get rid of them so that no one accidentally clicks on on them and brings them off. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let's put in this figure. And another thing, I, I might even add in another figure in in here, but. You know, let's go ahead. Let's put in the figure first. The figure's in front of of, of the bike. So, um, judging on the the size of the tree, we can put put the figure kind of in here, and then not it's kind of standing in front as well, of uh, a little bit closer to the foreground. So I'll, I'll put in a head, a head like that, just just a kind of square shape. That's all I'm doing. I'm gonna go with the shoulders like this, and you know, if you want a bit more. Uh, you, you know, take a bit more care with this. You can turn the pen on the side and then get in a bit of the detail like this so that it just comes off as a bit of a, a lighter kind of mark. And that allows you to, um, yeah, just get in a bit more detail without um, putting in all that line straight away, uh, committing to that line 100%. Okay, so she's got some... It's almost like a whole, looks like a onesie or something. Um, there we go. There's a leg there. And then we've got another leg coming out the back like this. Just got a backpack on there um, and there. Okay. And I'm going to get in some of the, the shoe, the smaller pen there. Uh, like this. And then just something simple like this. Okay. It looks like it's kind of facing forwards in that direction. Um, I think that should be should be it. We've got it. We've got some hair uh, just running over the back like that. I, I think I'll get in. I'll just um, put in a bit of that real quickly like that. Okay, it's still fairly um, simple in terms of the drawing, but we'll get in more details later. I think that's okay to imply a figure kind of looking out into the in, into the, the the river or what have you. Which is quite nice. Um, now the bike. Let's go ahead and and uh, get this one in. And uh, the main thing is the size of these wheels. We really want to watch out. We don't want to make it too big, and we don't want to make it too small. Okay. So looking at that wheel um, near her legs, that wheel comes up almost to her uh, hips, kind of around here. So we're going to draw around, and let's just try get in a bit of that wheel like this okay um, just drawing in pretty lightly a circle I'm just drawing a circle okay we've got that first one in now the second one kind of starts around about here um, and how do we know how far between first that back wheel and the first wheel well if we look at the space in between the first wheel and the second wheel it's roughly about one wheel's width that makes sense. So if you put it, put another circle here of, an, of that wheel, that's almost around the same width. So I'm going to put a, a dot around about there, and that will be my indication of where to stop that other that other wheel. Um, and then we can draw this one in it. It's on a bit of an angle, um, and it just has to all, also be the same height as that one in the back. Okay, so I'm going to just draw that one in like that. Okay, real quick. And, um, you know, we've got a basket here as well. You know, I've got a little basket and it's uh, got some wire on it there too, just like that. And uh, look at this. We've got this kind of spokes on the wheels, which is uh, great. And just start putting in some of this little, little bits and pieces, little details like that. Okay. Um, the wheels are, are fairly dark as well. Um, the tires, so I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of a little bit of darkness there to bring them out a bit. And then uh, we've got a little section here, which is like the this connects up to the seat there. 
okay, which I'm going to hatch away just like that. Got another, uh, whoops, this one actually goes up a bit further here um, and turns into the, the handlebars, which I'll get in like this. Yeah. Okay. And it don't have, doesn't have to be perfect, but it, just the handlebars need to connect up nicely like that. Then that comes down, you know, we've got this section at the bottom there, and this all disappears out into the back. That I'm not wanting to, to get all too much um, detail in. Okay, so there we go. There's a, it's a little basic kind of, of, of bike or something down um, in that section. You know, I'm going to go ahead and draw in a few other things. For example, um, I might have another bit of wood or something just in front. Because one thing I've noticed with this scene is that there's all this detail going on up here in the back. But there's really not enough detail in the front. You know, another another thing we can do if you want is um, you can even put another figure in. Let's, you know, I'll just experiment and put one in here. Uh, maybe they're wearing a kind of a coat or something. That, there, there, and um, just legs going behind this um, log or rock or whatever it is. Guys kind of just standing here, looking. Okay, there we go. There's another person. A couple of hands there. Why not get another person here that's perhaps just walking? Uh, whoops, that's okay. Just walking. Um, I said oops because I put the put that arm kind of coming out too far, but I can change that around a bit. Just um, just wing it. Okay, there's just a, a rough little figure. Um, it didn't work out exactly that I, the way I planned. This is, I was meant to do it kind of like, uh, let's have a look, kind of like this, for example. We have someone with their head moving to that side and then body kind of tilted forwards and then a leg there, a leg behind, just to make it look like they're walking um, in that direction. These two figures look too similar now and that's something that you have to be careful of as well when you're drawing when you're drawing figures um making sure that there there is a balance so if there's one kind of lean and tilted in that way i don't want to put this one too close okay or i can kind of balance it out by putting another one here that's walking in this other direction like that um they could be talking even like this and change the poses a little bit um could put an arm here and these and here we go we got people who are talking and having a bit of a conversation uh, behind the tree as people do secret conversations so there's a couple of um suspicious looking people there and you know we've got this guy here um now we've got all these figures and things like that i mean we can also look at getting uh you know, figure closer, um, just to just just to kind of demonstrate what this will look like. Um, I'm thinking where to put one if we want to have a figure that's closer. And the reason why I want to put one closer, just to illustrate the point, is that it will help bring you into the scene. So I normally won't put a figure right in the middle. I think I'll put one. I think I'll put one. Uh, oh, geez, where can I put the figure? Let's put a figure here. Hey, eh? so larger head. In, in the it here and then I'm just gonna go and get the shoulders of this person in like that in the body there and um, here I can just start putting in a bit of a bit of detail maybe this person is actually walking towards us that there we go and uh, the other leg perhaps just behind like that basic basic kind of figure um and i know it the, that it kind of overlaps a bit with um some of this stuff in the background but that's okay okay oh there's a, another arm it's it's not perfect certainly not perfect but it does look like a figure here in the foreground uh 
And then maybe we can get some here as well. You can do this in pen or you can do this in watercolors later. Doesn't quite matter. So we got a figure here. Um, in the background also, this is probably the time actually I'll swap to a smaller pen. I've got one of these little, uh, the 0.5. Let's get in some of this, this area here where we've got the water. Like that. A bit of that water, just a line where we want the water to be there. And then behind that, we've got some grass. So a, a section there for grass. Okay. But remember, all this stuff at the back is going to be very, very loose. Um, really, it's not a not really much that you need to do in this section here. I'm just, you know, you can mark out areas um, where you want trees and things to be. A bit of a, a tree line here in the back, for instance, very, very loosely. But apart from that, I, I wouldn't go into much off in, in there. So let's go ahead and get started. I, I do tend to spend a lot of time in the drawing and I hope we can finish this one off within the next half hour. Let's let's give that a try. Um, Tony says fractal replication maybe. Yeah, that's probably a good way, really good way to, to explain it. Um, a few more, ch uh, there's another chat also um, in, in my other event, this sort of streams to three different places. Uh, Melinda, Melinda Bowie says, uh, good morning from Vancouver and um, good to have you here. Uh, Melinda, is this your is this your first time? Or have you been if you've joined or might have forgotten? But um, if it's your first time, welcome and uh, and also welcome if it's not. So I'm going to go bring across uh, some of my paints now, okay, and we will get started with the painting. I'll shift this. Shift that reference picture again over to that side. Okay, um, now I'm going to use um, mainly mainly a large brush to begin with. I think I'll actually use this watercolor mop brush, and we're going to think about what color, uh, what type of colors we want added in here. And uh, there's lots of greens and things in the in the whole scene. I, I do want to put some greens in, so let's get some of this. Yeah, it's just sap green. You can see in my palette, I've squeezed out a whole, um, a whole bunch of that sap green on the paper. There, um, you know, even on the on the there, there is also some of this sandiness. This kind of I'm using titanium white, which is a kind of opaque type of white. It almost reminds me of Naples yellow, creamy white color. Um, which I'm going to just blend in here as well. So the whole thing, not just green all the way through. Okay, so there's a, there we go, there's a bit of that green. Just drop that in like that. There. Um, great. I just like to have other colors running through there as well. That's why I pick up a bit of. You can even pick up some Naples yellow and drop that in in some areas. Um, just see what it does. Let's, I'm going to just paint over the whole sheet, actually, once I've already gone down that far. don't normally do that. A um, bit of green. Then I'm going to go with... Uh, let's have a look. More of that green, but maybe some yellow. Just here, where the, the background is um, as well. I think I'm going to swap to this smaller brush. I've got a number 10 round brush. So just a bit of green there as well in the background. Hey, try to keep a bit of that area for uh, off. Just try to, not to go over that bike. I mean, get some red in on that bike would be nice. Even some red in on these figures. So that's why I'm being a bit more careful when I'm cutting around these these people because you need to save those colors, uh, need to save the white of the paper for a bit later. And um, I might put in a bit of water, a bit of, this is just some cerulean blue, which I will just dab on this area like that and get it to mix in uh, just like that. 
the quick mix. Uh, it's not even really blue. It's kind of teal color. We've got all these greens all the way through, but um, main thing I want to do is just join this section up a little bit, okay? And, you know, while I'm at it, I can just start adding in some smaller um, bits of darkness and things here in the foreground. I'm just using a bit of this. Uh, what is it? This is burnt sienna that I've dropped in here. Okay, like that. And I'm going to go into the tree with some burnt sienna plus uh, a little bit of raw umber. Okay. I mean, go in just like that. On the right hand side of the tree, it would be nice to have a bit of a bit of this titanium white in there as well. Just like that. I'll go in with the titanium white first, just to just to get in some a base sort of color there. Uh, and then I'll go in with a bit of darker color, burnt sienna, and a bit of this other stuff, raw umber. That's what I mean. Okay, and there we go. We're just going to color in some of these branches and um, get in more detail. That's why I said, you know, with the, the drawing, you don't have to get in everything because the remember the, the brush stroke, it, it's like drawing. I mean, at the end of the day, drawing and painting have quite a few similarities. Um, the techniques vary quite considerably, but you know, you can even pick up one of these little, put a little rigger brush and use this, for example, to get in some smaller bits and pieces. But I'm not going to go overboard because I'm going to go through that a bit later. Um, remember, we still have to get in this background area of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, the back, you know, the sky and things like that. So I'm just going to drop in some brown here. Just like that yeah just a bit of that brown and remember you can always go through later if it's not dark enough one of the most difficult things as a beginner watercolor artist is being able to figure out um, the, the exact sort of tone that you're using and um, you know looking at that reference picture this tree these trees are pretty much the darkest objects in this entire scene yeah. Apart from some of the rocks um, and the shirt of that that figure there, there's not really much else. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and put in maybe a bit of green again for this background section of the trees. Um, how about some orange? A little bit of orange to to get into this sort of uh, all kind of um, theme. Put in a bit of orange in there with greens, browns. Um, like that. Just remember to keep that section in the back pretty light. Okay, so I'm just cutting around like this. There's that figure here. Let's cut around that figure. Probably going to have to redo some of these branches as well. And, um, you know, sometimes when you've got areas that you're cutting around and they're still wet, the areas are still wet, uh, leave a little, see how I've left just a little white section um, of that on the right hand side of that tree it just means that the that water is not going to run into that tree so it's, it's a little way to a little hack there we go a bit more of that green out there in the corner um that okay there we go the trick is just letting things blend together and um you know having Having these mixes come up with uh, their own kind of special uh, color combination. You know, can't really get them by trying to mix these colors. You kind of just got to let them mix together on their own. Stuff in the foreground, I feel like there needs to be some more going on here. I could put in a bit of neutral tint here, um, just tap it into this section. Just want to darken a bit of these areas like this. Um, what I'm doing is just I'm just tapping the brush onto another brush to get in a few little marks here on the ground, keep things interesting. You know, we can also get in some other paint, just 
pop in a bit like that. Uh, there is a path that kind of goes in there. I'm not going to really bother with that. Uh, this figure will be nice to have some kind of softer shadow running across the ground as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the sky now. And I'm going to pick up large flat brush, cerulean blue. Drop that straight in like this. Okay. Now we still want it pretty, fairly light. Might add in a bit of pink, a bit of pink in there as well, so that we've got some purplish color in in this area. And um, I'm going to dilute that down. And uh, this is the power of just letting things mix on the paper. You can really get in uh, some interesting blends. Now here, where the trees kind of touch the you know, touch the sky. I'm also leaving a bit of color, uh, sorry, a, a line, a uh, white sort of wash line there. Yeah. I'm going to concentrate walk at the same time. But I'm, see, I'm leaving little bits of white on the paper purposely so that I can cut around, but also to create contrast. You don't have to paint everything in. I've done, I've done this in a few places. I've done this there, and I've also done it here, or next to the trees. You know, you can get a lot of mixing going on. Don't worry. Just let it, let it mix. Might work. I think it'll work. More blue here on the left-hand side. We'll do that same thing, and I'm using a three-quarter inch flat brush. This is you know, a fairly large brush considering um, this, the paper that I'm using is a uh, A4 sheet of paper. Something um, you guys in the States, I think it's uh, A4 is about 9 by 11. 9 by 11 inches, I think. Okay, so look at that. Just cutting around. There's enough, there's enough paint on this brush for me to pretty much do this whole section. And I'm constantly just flipping this brush over to try to get... The good thing about these flat brushes, you can you can paint with the edge of them, the corners of them, like that, and get a little section in. They're very versatile. I used to paint with them quite a lot. Now I'm I've noticed I've gone back to using round brushes. But this is one of my largest brushes. And the mop brush I've got is too worn out. The tip is just um the, the tip is just gone. So I'm using this one. There we go. Got something there. Okay, we've got something in there. Um, so one thing we really want to make sure is, you know, we don't want to go too much into that this section in the back because that area is going to be lighter. We want to keep things nice and soft, light in the background. The only thing that I could maybe suggest is you can pick up some neutral tint just after I've said to keep it light, um, and you can put in, you know, little soft areas of these tree trunks or what have you. Uh, Little like that, stretching out to the sky, just real quick things that um, blend in with the uh, sort of spread out a bit. Keep some of them go up into the sky. Who knows? I don't want to overdo it, but um, that's about the only thing that I put there in the background, only because we're going to start drawing too much attention back there if we uh, if we keep going. Okay. Remembering, it's just a sketch, Darren. So, I'm going to continue and let's put in some color for the figures. What colors are we going to use? Well, we've got green, so let's put in complementary color. Let's put in some some red, a bright. I'm going to go with a really bright red for this figure here in the foreground. Okay, maybe some bright red, and then I'm going to pick up some neutral tint. Let's drop that in like this. Yeah, because this figure is quite close to the foreground, I just want to darken a bit more, especially down the legs there. Now this section hasn't completely dried yet, you have to remember, so it, it just means you've got to take a bit more care um, so that it doesn't the, the paint doesn't spread all that much. Um, so I hope that doesn't go all over the place. We're going to get in the, a bit of a shadow as well, just here, you know, moving over to the left-hand side. Uh, something like that. 
I don't want to overdo it, and I think I might have already done that. But yeah, we'll let that blend in. The good thing about this uh, is that it's still wet. This area is still wet, so we can still play around with colors and things. Where's my number six? Number six round brush. Uh, number six round brush. We're gonna get in some more colors. Let's get some. Let's get some pink or something for this guy. Okay, He's wearing a pink suit. What's he doing? Um, a bit of blue there for the shirt. Um, we've got a maybe a bit of blue for that figure there. This bike, as it's kind of an orangey sort of color, let's um get in some orange for the bike. Okay, just I don't know, just a bit of that to do that. Uh, where else is there some orange in the on a legs, a feet there? Okay. What else have we got in here? We've got, uh, well, we've got to figure out what color we're going to make um, this figure as well. Let's, I'm going to also just go in with some orange in that section. Let's orangey red color. Okay, just like that. Um, here we go. And the hairs are kind of that same color anyway, from what I can tell. But I am partially colorblind. Um, let's get in some darkness on the, the legs. really matter. I'm just going to make it a kind of darker color there. Just like that. Okay. Um, one thing I've forgotten is I've, I've actually missed out a little section here in between. Where it's actually the water behind, um, unfortunately. But I'll, you know, we'll see how that goes. Something like that. And the bag, I think I'll just leave that, put in a bit of this white, titanium white there, um, and we'll add in some more colors and things later. We're just going, really just the first thing, the only thing I'm doing here is just putting in a, a really quick preliminary wash for everything. The background, everything like that, it's all pretty much done. Um, you know, here we've got these rocks, and uh, I'm going to get a little bit of brown on them, tiny bit of brown, maybe some... Sometimes you can mix, I've got manganese blue, and then I can mix a bit of English red in there, and it kind of turns into this lilac, sometimes a kind of rusty looking color, which I really like. Oh, let's, I'm gonna paint this figure that color. These two, let's get these two in. It doesn't matter. It's like that. And the, the logs and things on the ground, this is just gonna be some burnt sienna, just like that. Okay, join everything on figures as well there. Um, all right, that's looking all that's looking okay so far. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and and maybe get in a few more little bits for the trees, and then there's some shadows for the figures. But apart from that, I, we're almost finished. Uh, got looking at the chats. Sing me, uh, find me. From New, New Delhi, India. First time here. Welcome and um, great to have you here. They may. Uh, have a look, we've got a. I can't read this name, but I've seen your comment on YouTube. O's first biz. Yes. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, I, I might know you. I don't know, but um, let me know where you're watching from. How you found my my uh my channel also got uh oh no we don't have anyone else that's it um i've taken a little i've sort of stopped painting for a bit let me know how you're going um how's your how's your drawing painting coming along we're, we're we're pretty much at the three quarter stage almost done and i'm gonna you know i'm gonna give myself nine minutes to finish this one we're gonna go in with a bit of red I'm going to put in a bit of red and a bit of Naples yellow for the face. Just something like that. There. Maybe some for the arms. Like that. Yeah. Uh. That. Um. What I'd start might do as well. I do have a small flat brush somewhere. Here it is. It's a number six flat brush. 
little flat brush. I'm going to use that to pick up some of these browns and things and uh, get in darkness on parts of the tree trunk here. As you can see, just to the left-hand side, I want to, again, indicate that light source on that right, uh, right-hand side. So I'm darkening a little bit. Okay, I've got nine minutes to do this. I'm really just going to try my best to um, only put in what I need to. Can just I can just keep on doing this forever, especially with especially with branches. They just keep on repeating, and uh, I, I don't stop. <laughs> so that's getting to a stage where I'm, you know, fairly happy with it, especially the trunk area. I, I like that how it looks there. Um, the rocks, we want a bit of darkness underneath in some areas there, but a bit here perhaps, maybe a bit here, like that. Um, that looks a bit, a bit disjointed. I'm going to drop in some brown, a little bit of brown, and hope to shift some of this over to the left, some of this color. That and um, you know, this also could be a, a little shadow, um, a softer kind of softer sort of shadow. And if you if this area is dried for you, another thing you can do is just pick up a, a spray bottle, which, which I need to refill by the way. Should get a larger spray bottle. Really should get a large spray bottle. Look at that. It's a uh, perfume bottle. Let's re-wet that section. And I'm going to try just to uh, get in an uh, impression of this tree. Something like that, yeah. Not, not, uh, not too much at all. And I'm getting this figure here, joining on there. Um, that. I hadn't intended to get in any shadows, but now I've done some, I'm going to have to do the rest. There we go. There's another, maybe another one here for this tree. Soft. And um, there we go. These other sections, I might just put in a few marks like this. Um, it could be grass or shrubs, things just coming up. And just some verticals. Really, just basic little verticals. You know, if I usually when I have more time, I use this little brush, tiny little brush, and I pick up some green, and then I do this kind of thing. You know, smaller bits there, little bits of grass, like blades of grass in areas. Um, you can do that too if you want. Just a bit, a bit like that. Um, cool. I'm going to go in, let's get in a bit of shadow for this figure here, and uh, I'll use, just going to use that round brush, a little bit of that round brush, and uh, pick up some darker paint. There we go, just darken that area, maybe that bag as well. There, there. Um, this figure does need to be darkened slightly on the left. Two, um, like that. I'll put in some hair. For that figure, uh, there, there, this one here, a bit of darkness on the left hand side of that figure. This one here, even in the front, I feel like it needs a bit more. Needs a little bit more. Okay, um, some darker color here. It's just a, again, same sort of deal. Just putting in some few brush strokes for this tree. That, that, there. Bit on the left hand side of it. Left hand side of these trunks. That. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
Because remember, this is going to draw a little bit lighter too. Let's connect that up to the shadow on the ground. That should do the trick. This one here, these figures also should have a shadow there. There, do this. Fantastic. Um, bit of there's something in the face. The bit of shadow here on the face there, like that. Okay, maybe some hair. Yeah, just a bit of darker hair because they're closer to the front. Okay. Yep. Um, and I think that's looking okay. That looks all right for a quick sketch. Uh, so let's have a look at um, the questions. We've got Matt. We've got Matt R. First time here understanding sketching perspectives. Uh, what about leaves on trees? Leaves on trees. Um, so if I was going to do some leaves, basically when I went through with the uh, the brown for the trunks, I would also have added in some green um, sections, just large splashes of green around the area. And then what you can do is when that's all dried, you can just cut around that and do the sky. And so you've got areas of the sky which are kind of um, blue and then they join on to bits of green, kind of like what I've done here, right? But a, but a bit more exaggerated because you've got some sharper edges. I find that um, looks a bit more natural because otherwise, if say if I was just to go on now and start to do some sharp leaves and things here, it's that area is just going to stick out uh, way too much. So I like to have everything blend in with each other. Uh, these trees here on the left, this tree here looks a bit dark right now because it hasn't dried. Once it's dried and that sheen comes off, I'm anticipating for it to dry around about that um, that color there. Um, this is the kind of thing you can do if you're in a park, you've got a bit of time to sit around and do some sketching. It's pretty easy to, to just pull out that pen, have a quick sketch. And then, um, if you've got a little water brush, take that water brush out and just quickly paint it. Or you can do the painting when you get home. So look at that. We finished, I finished this one before seven and, uh, we've got, Let's have a look. Nikki, Nikki's here as well. Um, Nikki says, "Looks great, Darren, and enjoyed your interview on the Etcher Studio channel." Yeah. Oh, you you watched it. Um, <laughs> yeah. They emailed me the other day to to do a to do an interview, and I, I talk a little bit about my 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 kind of uh, inspiration and things with art, and I give give out a few tips there. If you guys are interested, you can you can watch it. Um, I've linked it somewhere in the playlist. If you check out the playlist, or you can just Google. Uh, YouTube, what is it, Darren Yo Etcher, and you can view it. Um, Pre-warning though, I was slightly uh, scatterbrained during that interview, especially the first half of it. So I was kind of umming and ahhing all the way through. But from halfway through, I think it sounds okay. But you know, so sometimes when you don't know about you guys, when you watch yourself on on camera, it's a bit cringe. I'm getting used to it though. Okay, yeah, I can. And um, Lindsay, oh, Lindsay's saying we should add some birds in there. Something I've forgotten to do. Let's give that a let's give that a crack. Um, Donna Louise from Morning from England, first time here, watching while I get ready for work. Great way to start the day. It is definitely a great day to start the day, Donna. Um, you can always check back on it later too. And. Matt, Matt says, thanks, Darren. We'll check out more on uh, your live videos in future. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Matt. And uh, where, how did you find my channel? I don't know whether YouTube actually suggests, suggests it to people or not. I, I mainly um, post my stuff out on Facebook, and I think a lot of people have found my channel from that. Um, I haven't been doing videos for very long or doing these uh, lives for very long. I've only been making videos for the last year or so, but I'm getting... Um, you know, get getting better at them. So thank you for for joining. Appreciate you, appreciate you being here. Um, also a chat from Alice, uh, Alice, Alice Villados, um, from the Philippines. Welcome, Alice. So, I, I think we're done with this one. And seven p.m. And I'm going to give this a, a a quick dry, so then I can paint on the one behind. 
Okay, so I'll give you guys a little bit of time to, you know, if you've got some questions to put into the chats. If you don't don't have any questions, uh, you just basically be able to pull out that next reference photo. But I'll just pause the audio so that you don't get a um, horrible noise in here. Okay, that's all dried off now. And as you can see, the shadows on that tree kind of similar um, tone to that one on the right once it's dried. So it's one of those things you've got to predict when you're doing watercolors. This figure as well, probably sharpen this one up later when we when I've when I've got a bit of time. Also like to afterwards, you know, off camera, I like to get out a bit of gouache, a bit of um, opaque gouache and play around, get some highlights in there here and there as well. Do have a little pen. Where is it? It's a uh, one of these pens. It's a Oscar. I don't know. It's a white pen, white pen kind of thing, liner. And you can go through and get highlights with that as well. So, um, buy them in all different uh, shops. So, so, I'm going to turn over the page. Um, let's do the second one. I'm actually looking forward to this one. Uh, I like buildings, I like drawing buildings. Though I do get sick of them from time to time. It's not often that I do. Uh, let's bring up that second reference photo. I'm just going to close down some of my other photos up uh, now because I've got a few things going on. Uh, I'm just glad my computer has not crashed yet. I don't know what was going on last time. It's normally very, it's, it's never given me any troubles for the past five years or however long I've had it. But you know how with electronics these days, they're not really built to... They're not really built to last all that long. I've got a computer that I bought back in 20, 2010, 2009, 10, and that still works perfectly. Um, fantastic. Um, what have we got here? So I got up, got up this new uh, new reference picture. So if you guys, if you guys are ready, you've got your, your reference pictures up. I'm going to just swap it over on the screen. There's a lot of multitasking going on, you know, when I do these and you can probably tell that I'm kind of, I, I kind of, um, multitasking is not my, my forte. I try to listen to um, YouTube videos sometimes when I'm approving posts and things. And, you know, it's weird. You just, I hear it playing in the background and then I'm thinking, oh, what happened there? And it's been about 15 minutes. I had no idea what, what I was listening to. Um, I can focus really well on like one particular thing for a long period of time, but when you give me five different things to do, um, I'm not the best at it. But I certainly get better with more practice. So I, I really like doing these as well because the interaction, the comments that I get, it's um, it's just fun. It's fun to see how uh, other people are, are tackling this scene and um, good to have you here. Keep me company. Uh, what have we got? We've got. Donna says she found um she found me on on my post watercolor beginners and beyond Facebook page. Ah, oh, great. Yeah, I posted that the other I think it was a couple of days ago. So good to have you here, Donna. Um. Yeah, Diane. Now I know no Diane a little bit from we think we started our groups around the same time, or she might have started hers before me. So um, it's really good to have people have these sort of communities out there and um, just sort of motivate each other and learn from each other. And Nikki's saying, channel suggested to me around two weeks ago. That's how I subbed. Okay, cool. All right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly how it works. I'm still learning with all this stuff. Um, I'm getting better at it. Uh, and I'm going to start with the next one now. Um, 
let's go ahead and, and um, get that pen out. I want to show you some, later on, if you hang around to the end, I'll show you some paintings I did with this pen, which is a, it's a fountain pen with water-soluble ink. I did a few watercolor paintings, so if you hang to later, I'll show you. Um, I would appreciate as well if you if you are liking things as you're enjoying the video, you're learning something from it, just to share it around with your friends, like the video as well. Um, apparently that helps get my stuff out more. Okay, I'm going to use these two pens again, 0.7 and 0.5. And this is a, this is a fun scene. Um, well, it's fun for me anyway. What I'm going to do first is we're going to separate this around about halfway point, just underneath the halfway point. What I'm trying to do is put in a section where the house finishes, where that, that white sort of shack touches the ground. Looking at that point, where is that? Certainly, it's certainly near the middle of the page, but it's not the middle of the page. It's kind of just below the middle of the, the page. Okay, so that's where I'm going to draw this middle reference line. I'm big on reference lines. These start big, and then and then draw the smaller things afterwards. It makes things a lot easier for you. And I'm going to go and put in. Should we just go in and just should we just go in and do it? going into it that's the question right let's why not um we've got a, a section here just basically a pole which comes down like this there there um another one here great thing about these is that they're the fantastic warm-ups one there got one here you know um, another wooden wooden pole that and there's another one that just sort of goes out there like that. And join on together. Um, something like that. There. And these connect up. There. They don't have to be perfect because remember these are these are wooden logs. They're certainly not by any means um, you know exactly cylindrical. There we go. Just something like that. Join them up. Even some imperfections like that where it moves around and that's we're good to go. I might also, while I'm here, let's put in a figure here. Just a head of a figure. Um it's, it's kind of standing like this. I don't know if I'll keep this that figure there, but um I do want to put some in before I get too invested in the buildings and drawing the buildings so that there is a bit of um overlapping going on okay just scribble in a bit of hair and then i'm going to go straight into this uh what you call it little shack house um little farmhouse the bottom of that house is comes like kind of like this it's it's really if you look at it it's a um almost like a rect it's like a box a funny roof on top I'm going to draw the side of it first, kind of like this, okay? And, geez, this is actually a bit more complicated than I thought. Um, but we'll, we'll go ahead and let's just get in this the box shape first, okay? Let's draw in a little box, like that. This comes out around about here, comes down approximately here. Um, it's probably actually further down, but it's okay. I've placed, uh, oh, let's have a look. Yeah, that's okay. Cool. We can always correct it later, um, a bit like that. There's this kind of overhanging section of the, um, the roof there. Okay. What's going on? There. This kind of comes out a bit more, actually. And then there is uh, this kind of section here it's kind of a little undercover area okay so i can go ahead and play around get in some of that detail there it's just a you know it's just a, a little extension coming out like that and then we're going to use we're going to get some of these holes that are just running down into the ground like that okay i'm using that reference picture in a very basic manner. Now then we've got this figure here. The, the interesting thing is um, 
it, you know, the, the shapes there now overlap because of what we've done. See, I've put it ahead here, but if I had too much detail in here, I'd have to draw over the top of everything else. So that's another figure. Maybe this person's holding on to something like a, uh, I don't know, what do you call them, like a, a rake or something. Something like that. Uh, and then we're going to go, where am I up to? Here. So this is the bit that comes off the roof. There's a pole that comes right down like this. Put another pole around here. Keeping it simple and continuing on. And uh, little sections of it that just touch the ground like that. Uh, I'm not so fast about the accuracy of it. Okay. And let's go ahead and start putting in this roof. Um, and it goes up here. Like almost it's this weird triangular shape, but then it has another sort of another extra element on top, like this, another edge triangle right on top. Let me let me just see how am I gonna do this? Maybe something like this. There, there, um divide this bit up a little bit. Draw this side in there. Uh, top, top of the building, going all the way across this. Uh, there is something, looks like there's a, a chimney or something here as well, which I'll just draw in there like that. Uh, ooh. That's still pretty rough. Doesn't look like much at the moment. Get a bit more coming off that side. That there. And then we can end the house around about here. There we go. Something like that. It looks okay. Uh, not the most accurate, but I think it should do. Sitting on these stilts. These are stilts that are on the ground driven into the ground. The process of just t dismantling something, a shape into smaller shapes is something which takes time and a lot of uh, observation and practice. I still haven't 100% got my head around it. I think it will take me the rest of my life to, um, there's just so many things out there, so many shapes and so many uh, you know, if, if you want to try something hard, try portraiture. Windows, like that. Maybe a frame, window frame. There, there, there we go. That's a window. Notice as well, it's not, certainly not exactly how it looks in the reference here. Yeah? But we'll make do. Doesn't have to be. Do a window. Uh, what do we got here? We've got a door. There's a door, but there is a little, what is it called? A uh, staircase. And up into there. That comes down kind of like this. There. A couple of that, a bit of the railing. Just scratching a few marks like that. So that it looks like a bit of a Certainly looks like some stairs going up. Uh, I like this area of darkness here for the door. I'm gonna scratch that in like this. Okay, and uh, what I like to do is I just like to get in the frames, the frame of that door here on the side to It's all quite dark in here. Uh, look at this, some kind of thing running down the side of the building. Really the rest of the building is, is not a big deal. Uh, well, I'm just trying to put in these windows and things first, okay, there's a window here, here, and then there's one here, that, um, look at that, 
Look at these windows. They're really quite interesting. I don't know what those are. I don't think I'm going to draw them in. There's some kind of some kind of uh, attachment outside the windows. They look like little blinds or something that can be adjusted, but they're on the outside of the window. Are they, you know, shades, I suppose? Um, kind of like external blinds? I've never seen that before. If anyone knows what that is, let me know. We'll continue on. Simplify. They're just squares. Just get in some squares in that section like that. And then um, we can start doing things like coloring in little sections. You know, this could be a window that just opens up like a midway. Uh, this one can have uh, can be opened up kind of halfway like that. You, you know, I, I don't I don't want to try to get that whatever that is in. Simplify down, and I can be satisfied with something like this. Uh, something I really that I got really sort of drawn to as well is just these um, wooden wooden um, we call them slates that just run across like this. So we can do a do a bit of that. Have a look, uh, running down the side of that building like this. I want to get a more of an angle as we go down. Yeah. Just try to get these all in one go. Kind of cut through the windows as well. Kind of the pattern of it. Okay. Underneath, let's have a look. Uh, you know, there's actually some of it running on that right hand side. But I don't know what's here. Not really much. Yeah. There. Yeah. Maybe a bit here. Can't even remember what is in this section actually. There. You know. I, I might even put a window here. But I want to put a window here. Something like that, just halfway open. Scratch that, scratch it in like that. Um, rooftop also. We're going to imply some lines. Have a look at the direction of the lines of these uh, section of the roof. It just runs like this. Um, if I've got a smaller pen as well, this is where that 0.38 pen kind of comes in handy. Do stuff like this. Doesn't really make a huge difference actually. I'm going to get this uh, all these little marks in. That this one, this section here kind of comes out more like this, more of an angle. Okay, a bit more. And of course, this little bit too. The rooftop there. Okay. Uh, we've got some trees. I'm going to go scribble in some of these trees. Just there's a tree. There's another tree here. It's uh, we can do this. Look at that. It's just a, a big mound of um, leaves on there. Okay. Drawing them up like that. There. Um, got another tree here running through this section. And it goes up. Had a bit of fun and. You know, we've drawn trees just in the last one, so remember what I've I've kind of gone through with with you in terms of um, we are getting the branches to sort of spread out and turn into other branches into almost twos. I'd say like twos to threes to fours or what have you. Um, but it's just going up. This this mainly going up now. This is another way you can do leaves, uh, you know, scratch in a bit of the where you might indicate clumps of leaves and things like that here, for instance. So there's an edge to this area, 
of leaves, but I'm still going to get that in pretty soft. Um, another thing I want to do as well, I want to get in some uh, trees and things behind this uh, behind this farmhouse. Why is that? So I can draw some contrast um, to the roof area. I don't know, it might or might not work, but we'll, I'll give it a crack. Okay, just a bit of that there. I know there's a bit here, a bit here, because that roof's going to be pretty dark. Uh, light, it's going to be pretty light. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to section here of a, another bit of the this under cover area, like that. Um, in the background, um, the far distance, it's kind of mountainous region. I can't really see. It's it's real, really quite basic out there. Uh, a lot of that will have to be indicated. Um, what's this? I think that's like a hose or something. You know, you can draw a few little lines and things like that, and. Uh, you know, bits of fence across like this. There, um, another figure, but we get another figure here. Just uh, all three of them standing around doing something. This guy's got his hands up. Like that. What's this one? It's the point five, point seven. Um, notice how this overlaps also with this section. Okay. All right. Uh, we are pretty much almost done with this with this drawing. Uh, I don't really think of anything else that I, I want to put in for the sketch. Uh, there, there are things in here like, uh, you know, there's actually little chairs and bits and pieces running through this section. I mean, we can even put like a bush or something, a couple of bushes and stuff here on the ground. Um, like that, it doesn't matter all too much. The shadow is kind of running from, so that the light's hitting that building on the left and moving towards the right. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and give this one a, a go. And I hope I maybe put in a bit more detail with the watercolor, watercolors later. Right. And just a few comments, a few comments here. We've got, uh, got Kate. Um, Kate, uh, just tuned in. I'll stay for a while and um, watch the replay. Awesome, Kate. Good to have you around. And um, Kate says, love this old found farmhouse and surroundings, trees, etc. Looking forward to the painting. Yes, let's see, let's see, let's see how it works out. Um, I'm not the I'm not so um, impressed with the drawing, but I think we can salvage a bit with the with the painting. Remember, it's it is pen, but we can still go over a lot of it. Um, a good drawing makes for a good painting. It's like having a good blueprint or a good plan. I know some people draw afterwards, and that's great as well, just depending on, on the, the subject. But for me, I find I need to have something, um, I really need to have something in there before I start. And there's also a comment from Lou, Lou Reed. Oh, Lewis Reed. Lou, Lou Reed's another... Um, it's not a famous person. You you popped up on Facebook. This is my first time. Awesome. Thanks for, for joining Lewis. And I'm um, glad you uh, glad you found it. Um weird how it just kind of suggests um suggests this page to people. I, I suppose it's you know if you're interested in watercolors it or, or sort of drawing it might suggest it to you. So um but hey, I'm not complaining. Donna, Donna Louise, love this. Got to fly, catch a replay. No worries, Donna. I'll uh, I'll catch you next time. And um, yeah, remember to post in the group as well. I want to see what you what you end up uh, painting. Um, how's everyone on YouTube going? You 
are you keeping up and uh yeah do you need a bit of help or we're pretty much ready to to get started um righto so we'll just quickly quickly just define this area a bit more especially underneath the roof i know i've kind of touched on this area a bit but i want to add in a bit more in here there's some sections on the roof even that you can add in look at that there's even an aerial coming out the side of the roof like that okay it doesn't really matter as long as you've got the big shapes in there you're going to be completely fine righto so start with a big brush i'm going to use this one here number 10 round brush and let's pick up a bit of green again okay and i'm going to use sap green closer to the front and I might, i'll actually add some more darker colors uh darker green things in there too being careful to cut around some of those figures as well okay there we go cut around that uh around that fence too so that we've got get in some of that brown okay there we go there you know this this um what do you call it this uh little thing here is blue just put in some cerulean blue a light wash of it there just like that i don't even know what it is but we don't need to at this moment it's just all abstract colors okay and just that i mean we're going to put in some darks as well in here but we're only just worried about color and tone at this stage i'm going to paint through the whole thing actually because this page is um I've, i don't know if you can see but i've glued it down so it's not certainly not going anywhere it's kind of like when you tape down a bit of paper um i don't know what you guys do but i hate um taping down paper or or sort of um getting ready doing those kind of things um i know some people stretch their watercolor paper as well i i, I just don't like doing it I feel like it just wastes time so uh we've got some of that green going on in here i'm going to move that up in here as well so this area is green as well this is sap green and and uh, sap green is a very sort of uh vibrant green color i really like uh, i really do like it especially if you're doing things like grass um might pick up some naples yellow let's drop some naples yellow in bits as well so it's not all not all the same yeah remember when we move up the page we're gonna have to at some stage add in some warm colors um i, I do want to yeah I, I do want to add in a bit of yellow yellow ochre maybe some, some burnt sienna some red or something like that here um in the back that so that it's not all green we're just cutting you know going over bits and pieces we don't have to worry too much about the exact color the house um i want to put in some of this it's this is just titanium white you can another option is just leave it don't even bother putting color onto it if you don't want to okay but i'm going to put in oops one thing you gotta be careful of green there's green coming into it i uh the problem you just got to be careful i don't want any green in there a little bit of mixing down further down below is okay but for the rest of it i'm not going to really bother um, i'm trying to mix up this kind of rusty looking color as well let's get a bit of this red uh so it's a bit of burnt sienna i'll drop some of that into the roof but i'll add in i find a bit of this it's almost like uh blue uh what is it called manganese blue hue mixed with some of this uh, red here can create a bit of a rusty looking color which i, I quite like uh, i see if i can pull it off i don't know oops yeah yeah very light color on the roof we don't want much in there at all it's almost just water like 10 percent pigment in there that's all we want in there and um, i can we can go over and dry brush it later so it's not a huge deal then what we can do is we can start picking up 
darker colors and again getting in like this darker section of the house here on that right hand side it's a uh, it's a way to work more efficiently and as well get a bit of blending going on like this a bit of darkness under there and here here we got it let's see i'm just having a look at the reference every now and then i sort of peek at the reference and just see uh what tone am i using really not the color isn't a huge deal for me it's just what tone am i using over here on that right hand side it's actually pretty light actually a bit more light in that section i'm gonna oh well, let me see no it's still actually darker i've been intrigued darken that section up a bit like this there there and and notice i'm letting it blend in with the ground because i don't want a, a hard sort of looking thing edge you know what i mean in there little shade there i can put some maybe some blue in like that there um, even the windows here let's put in a bit of blue for the windows like that um before this area down the front dries some brown and burnt sienna I can mix up, drop that in like this here, and here we got, you know, just a fence, just a few brush strokes. That's all you need just to to get in that color there. And I'm leaving some white in there as well for just some, you know, imaginary highlights. Just treat it like a coloring in book. Um, this grass actually does need a bit more. Color in it here and there. I'm going to spray down this left hand side because it's kind of dried a bit here. But other than that, it looks okay. Um, let's go and uh, put in a bit more green. I've got some other greens as well. I do have some of this emerald green, which is nice. Um, I'll drop a bit of that in here. And what it's just going to look like is maybe some shadows uh, being cast by these uh, poles. These wooden poles okay and this is not the end product in terms of the wooden poles there's still going to be some more um darkening later on down the track okay there we have it a bit of color going on in there um seeing if i can just lighten that section up the front up a bit more some more shadow color on the ground there um, I really want to make it quite dark so that we've got some blending and things going on um, in this wet on wet too like that and and you know what will happen is that this will actually dry off quite uh, significantly lighter it looks like a lot at the moment well I hope it will but usually it does usually it spreads a lot and then um, yeah Hey, a bit of shadow there. And, uh, you know, what while I'm at it, why not put some in here as well? That there. All right, um, we've sort of done that section, overdone that section. Let's put in a bit of green, a few little greens here, a bit of green here. I'm going to have to turn on the light to my apartment. It's too dark. Be back. Okay, we've got quite a few people, uh, quite a few people watching. How are you going? Let me know. Let me know how you're doing in the comments. Are you keeping up? Um, and uh, how are you finding it so far? If you got any questions? Feel free to, to uh, drop them in uh, in the comments. And um, you know quite excited tomorrow in melbourne we're finally out of lockdown apparently we're the most locked down country uh country most locked down city in the world um don't even know what to do once we're out but this is what i'm talking about here this see in these built in these uh 
these little bits of tree, I am putting in uh, some color and using this to cut around the rooftops of the house. House, uh, this here, we, we can just cut around like this and I'm using a pretty large brush as well. And this will really bring out some of the colors and uh, the lighter colors of the roof. Okay, I don't want to overdo it, um, but it does work. This. Careful not to go over it though. Stop shy of it. You'll be fine. Um, here's a few little leaves and things. I know someone, was it Matt? I think Matt was asking about the, the uh, how do you do tree leaves and things before. So this is one way. Um, I put in, this is sap green, so you can tell, look at that, it's so vibrant compared to the others. I've got some emerald green and I've got some, uh, what else do I have? Emerald green and I've got hookers green as well. But, you know, remembering that the uh, shadows for all these trees and things, they're going to be on the right hand side. There, there we go, a bit more color, a bit more there. Look at that. I'm just putting in the whole shape of those leaves. Okay. Um, what I do is that I kind of let this dry off a bit and then I will go into it with some, uh, go and do the sky a bit later. And what that does is the reason why I sort of wait for it to dry is so that, um, so basically uh, the sky wash at least separates um, a little bit from this wash, but I want everything to kind of run together a bit still. So it's, uh, you've got to time it. Yeah, I'm just imagining a tree. I feel like there's got to be another one here. Who knows why, but I just feel like I, I need to put one there, a bit of green or something like that. Okay. Um, you know, also, you'll notice that there are some kind of dark areas of this, uh, what do you call it, this little shade area underneath like that while i can i'm gonna just get in a bit of that at the same time um like that indications of these poles as well i'd still want to leave a lot of it white um you know the top bit there especially but you know there's some other bits that need more contrast for example here just underneath the rooftop there, that, that should be darker. Usually a little bit of darkness straight underneath the roof really helps to bring out the um, buildings a bit. You know, even here there is a shadow, you can see, kind of cast like that. There. We've also got a shadow here. Shadow here. Here. Okay. No, it's very basic. Um, underneath the house, and this is something I probably should have done a bit earlier. There's also some dark bits and pieces. A bit of darkness under there too, so I'm just going to indicate a bit of that there. And it's on it's on stilts, this house. There. Darkness there. Like that. Um did put a some kind of shrub or something there as well yeah a bit of color like that um there there good um i might start putting in some darker areas of this these uh, poles on that right hand side of them like that i'm doing it now because uh i've now now having a look at all this other stuff up here trying to find a way to connect it up a bit more Okay, just a bit more to have some of these shapes join on um, uneven areas of the ground and textures and things like that as well is nice. Um, but joining up sections to the um, to the foreground, a little bit of that is nice. And a bit there, a bit of shadow there. I'm going to go in and do the um, sky now. Okay, a bit of this, 
way too dark. I can spread this out. This can be pretty much the whole, all the paint I use for the sky. Okay, very, very light wash of cerulean blue. And I'm cutting around the rooftop like that, some of the trees, but keeping in mind that you don't have to cut around them all. You can sort of join it up in areas. And notice because I've left it to dry a bit, it, um, it doesn't completely mix in, but you still get a, a soft kind of damper edge. Soft damper kind of edge on the um, where the trees finish. I also like to leave some intentionally like this. See, bit of white there, bit there. Um, running out of blue, I'm going to pick up some more. Yeah, like that, like that, there, that, that's it. That all you need to do. In fact, um, this consistency here is the perfect consistency for the sky. This um, that amount. This area here is probably going to dry a little bit darker than the uh, than this side on the right. Okay. Um, that's looking all right. Let's start putting in some of the figures, some color for the figures. I'll get in some, maybe some brown color there for that one. Let's get in a bit of red for this one um, here. And let's get in, oops, a bit more, a bit more of that red there. Let's get in a bit of blue or purplish color for this one here, like that. It's the last one. Um, a bit of color for the faces. that the heads um smaller brush little little round brush that i'm going to use to put in the legs now for the figures using neutral tint nothing special and while the the paint is still wet i'll put in the legs like this okay hopefully with a few just a little marks like that will do the trick um and we got some shadows maybe running across that right hand side. They're not too obvious. Uh, they're not too obvious at all, but they are there. Um, you know, even beneath these areas of the rooftops and things there, I can exaggerate that little. Um, this roof, there's a tiny little shadow. It's too dark. That out a bit. Little shadow running across for that. Um, what else have we got? Uh, some more, this kind of a bit of a reddish brown color here for the roof and the edges of the roof and, um, you know, indicating some rust as well. See, just little bits like that. We're kind of just dry brushing in sections. This little bit of dry brushing is all I need to do. We're trying to get this kind of weathered look on the building, and so it does really help to have a bit of red and dry brushed in there. And actually, here on that side of the building, it's really not as dark as I'm making it, but um, I'm going to darken it anyhow. I just want some more contrast in here, and uh, even underneath this section, I feel that's got to be darkened a bit too. This bit the roof especially here a bit of that um there a bit of dry brush here as well to indicate a bit of weathering on the on the building but I don't want to go over the whole lot you know just let it let that um light sort of shine through a bit all that darkness um Right. And how about I put in a little some branches and things onto this tree where I can. A bit of these branches. And I'll finish this one off in about ten minutes myself 10 minutes to finish it off otherwise I'll be here again 
quite a while. Um, there's so much you can continue to do and um, continue to fiddle around with, essentially. You know, this is the last sort of bit where you're adding in really just some dark sections and um, bits and pieces that will help to, um, yeah, just really bring out the light areas of the painting. So uh, I, I'd like to exaggerate, especially in areas here, see the rooftop where we've got a bit of this darkness around the roof, help to bring it out a bit more. Um, maybe a larger brush would be better. A bit of darkness on that tree, that right hand side there as well. Um, what else have we got? These need to be a little darker. Yeah. A little darker. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. That. You can also use a little rigger. Rigger to um, put in some details of these. Parts of the fence that really big lines running through like that. Um, great. Looking, what else can we do to further just bring this all together? I, I think maybe some darkness under here for that door in here would be good. Um, you know, some of these windows. Darken them up a little as well, like that. Um, also, some of the windows maybe here, like that. A bit of, a bit more contrast. Uh, there. Looks a bit scary now, doesn't it? Uh, the underneath the roof. Marker here. That. Yeah. Okay, underneath the, the building as well. I've kind of gotten rid of some of that stuff, but there there is darkness under there. That. Just a bit of color for this bush. I do you think maybe these poles in the front, they just don't look, no, they don't look dark enough in areas. I, I want to emphasize them more so that they come forward a bit. Um, just think, like in the photograph, it looks all right, but um, maybe I've got to bring it forwards more and try that and see what happens. Around. A little bit of tiny little details underneath the windows and stuff as well helps, like a bit of shadow. Uh, but I mean, we've got shadow in there anyhow, so you know, just reinforcing the shapes of the windows that can help. Something like that. Um, what else have we got? Really, it's Have a look. And a few birds. And while we're while I'm thinking about what to do. That's just in the sky. There you go. Um look at these this figure. I want some more darkness. A bit to the right hand side, it's on the ground as well. There, probably going to be darker in there too. Forgotten about that. 
notice just how many layers you can keep on doing this forever. Um, and I want to get this done before eight. Um, but really, uh, look, you can call it. You can call it done already. You know, I've put in pretty much everything that I wanted to put in there. Um, probably a little bit looser than how I how I normally work, but uh, I think that's gone okay. What do you guys think? This last painting, I think, is going to take a bit longer. Oh, I've forgotten some of these poles and stuff here. Okay. So, I'll, you know, later on, I think I'll go back into it and get some more detail and, and things in. Um, yeah, get a bit of detail and things like that in at the end. Um, I, I like some of these sections here, especially just the uh, contrast between the light and dark areas certainly a lot looser than um i usually draw and paint but um hope you kind of get a get the idea of what i was doing um what i was doing in this uh, in this scene and basically um the drawing techniques as well that i was using as well so i'm going to give this a little dry uh, i'm going to have a look at the chats as well um have a look marie uh, Marie says, uh, Marie Maxwell, enjoyed the, these two paintings, but it's bedtime in Kiwiland. Thank you. Well, uh, have a good night, and I'll see you next time, Marie. Thank you for watching. Kate says, a beautiful painting. I'm really looking forward to having a go, enjoying Freedom Day tomorrow. Uh, it's great here in Sydney. So normal again. Thank you for the great session, Darren. Thanks, Kate. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Just being able to go out and do stuff like eat at a restaurant. I mean, it's 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 insane. It's just gone on for for a long time, and I think people are are um yeah just getting a bit sketchy at home. So it's good to be out out and about. Um, get, you know, also getting some exercise outdoors, which is nice. I I go to the gym normally almost every day, and you know, not being able to do that for quite some time, it's um yeah it's it hasn't hasn't done so so good for my mental health but you know i find ways to, to exercise at home as well and paint and tan ting says lovely colors on your paintings uh looking forward to see your final work after your touch-ups yeah i'm gonna go through and um see what else i can do maybe a few uh just a little bit more darkness but as you can see like the the you know the longer that you i find the longer that you spend on the drawing um the better in terms of how detailed and how uh, realistic things will turn out. So, really, just really just depends on on how long you um, you want to dedicate on a scene, and also for the the general look of the scene as well. So, you might be happy with something that's looser, and I tend to be, you know, moving towards that in, in ways like the most trying to find the most efficient way of painting something or drawing something in, without, uh, you know, spending all day doing it. So, um, what have we got here? There's a comment. Uh, well, there's a few, a few of the comments on uh, YouTube. There is uh, look. Lindsay says pretty okay. Started badly, but looks reasonable by the end. Um, you talking about yours or mine? <laughs> um, either way, um, you know, if you make it through to the end, you you know, you've won. So, uh, and even if you don't, you can pick it up later and you can learn stuff. Um, you can learn stuff through it. So, um, every, everything you, you draw and everything you paint, um, it's kind of like mileage, like brush mileage, they call it, you, you know, and, um, it's training your brain to, to understand how much water to mix in with your paint to get a certain color, to get a certain tone. And you can read all the books that you want and watch all the demonstrations that you want, but you, you will only be able to understand mixing of colors and tones, um, how things dry, being able to predict how something dries as well by actually doing it. So um, it's great practice. And, oh, yes, okay, so it's yours. No, no worries, Lindsay. Um, but like I said, uh, the, the practice is what counts. 
And, you know, I think you were, you might have been there when I did my last demonstration and I showed you guys some of my paintings that I did, my older paintings, and they were like pretty, you know, 2014, 15, I could barely draw um, or barely paint, I mean. So, uh, so Philip says, awesome, that's what I think. Awesome. And uh, thank you, Philip. Tat to Tat says, just woke up. Dang, missed most of it. Uh, looks great. Awesome. Um, I wonder where V is. I, I know V was um, supposed to be here, but I, but uh, for, for V, it's like 3 a.m. in the morning. She messaged me and said that she'd set her alarm to, to come along to this one. <laughs> um, but that's okay. You're probably hearing this later, but you can always watch it after. No pressure. I think sleep is more important. Getting a good night's sleep is 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 crucial. Um, I say that because I don't really get that much sleep these days. <laughs> probably get about six hours, um, which isn't the best. I really need to sleep more. Uh, Yvonne says, join late, but am looking forward to trying. Awesome, Yvonne. Um, and good to see you. See you here. And Lindsay saying your help with Rust was superb, fantastic. And I find when you're using like things, like if you're using Cerulean Blue and mixing it like a kind of muted blue um, and you're mixing it with like a muted sort of red, that's how you get that Rust kind of color. And especially if, if the colors are granulating, you do get that. It's it's a interesting, interesting color and it dries, um, dries nicely. Uh, Nathalie says, fantastic paintings, done the sketches, but have no colors with me. We'll finish them later today. Uh, thanks, Darren, for sharing from the, your expertise. Thank you. Thank you, Nathalie. Um, yeah, you, you know, anytime you get a bit of, you know, anytime you get, um, you know, what, what am I trying to say? If you get a bit of time to sketch, it's always a good idea. So, um, yeah, basically, if you're out and about, in uh, in a park or something like that, um, and and you just want to draw what you see. It's a, it's fantastic practice in a cafe or something like that. So I'm going to put this one away and um, going to go ahead and start in the next one now. And I think this one would take a little bit longer, but I I'll try to do it um, faster. It's something that I've done before in the past, and uh, this is kind of the the version I did ages ago. This was back in maybe, oh, I don't know how long ago, maybe like eight months or something ago. Um, but, you know, I'll talk you through like real basics of it. You can see here, a lot of this stuff has been condensed down into one big um, dark area. So you've got this area in the ground, which is pretty dark. Then you've got these buildings, which are all pretty dark. And that joins onto the darkness of these trees and things in the background. Then you've got these buildings here, which I've really just indicated around that and the rest of it is just light so you know it's the same process that i always do I just paint all the light bits first anything with light um and warmer colors do that first and then on the second round i go through and do all the the um the dark bits so normally if you put pure watercolor painting i'll start with the sky first as well and then i'll bring that down to uh to, to a kind of a yellow yellow sort of mix so let's go ahead and give this a try um, I'm going to, you know, let's see if I can change it up a little bit too. I don't want to make it look exactly the same as this one and, uh, probably couldn't even if I, if I tried. Let me put out the, where is it? Reference photo. There we go. Probably hard for you to see, but, um, you can grab the reference in the discussions as well. I have used another bit of paper. This I'm gonna to have to move the camera a bit, so you might get some shaking here because I don't think this is gonna fit under. Oh wait, actually it might do. Let me see. Uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna to have to adjust the camera a bit. Sorry guys, so it's gonna look a bit, a bit funny. So, I'm using a little um, extendable lamp thing to hold uh, a camera. It's not the most steady kind of option, but it does work. It does work. And this has to go up a bit more. Okay. Um, if, while I'm kind of doing this, feel free to, you know, send through some questions or talk in the chats. 
just want to make sure I've got most of it in, you know, because uh, I think that I think that should be okay. Well, I'll have to make do with that. Um, some stage I do want to get another DSLR or something that will make it easier to um, zoom in and out and stuff like that. You just turn that a bit. I think that's okay. You can you guys can see that it should be okay. Righto. Um, now the, the drawing, um, the drawing is going to be a little bit um, more difficult to see because it's going to be in pencil. So probably need to. Um, I'll probably draw a little bit darker so that you guys can see. Okay, but um, just a heads up in case you're wondering. Camera just doesn't really pick up well on the the pencil. Uh, a few more questions. Lindsay says, uh, Phillips is nice. Lindsay says, I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Lindsay. And um, yeah, you'll probably be able to watch this one afterwards. Tank, tat to tat, tank, tat to tank. Uh, can we send you some pictures to use? I got some. I don't know where to start on them. Yeah, you can send them send them through to me. Um, you can probably find me on Facebook. You can send it to me personally, or you can just post it in the um, post in the discussions of this event, and I'll get through to it. And then I can uh, yeah try to give you a hand. But yeah, or, or you can tag me. Just just tag my name somewhere in a post, and I'll um I'll find it. Uh, Matt says, is there a specific way to start the colors, especially on drawn sketches? Um. Yeah, you mean like painting when you're, uh, what do you start with? What colors do you start with? Normally I start with yellows, um, warmer colors, and then I do all the blue colors, um, the, the cooler colors later. But, you know, especially if you guys seen like this where you've got like, uh, you know, a, a slither of blue sky, even if you start with that blue first, really light wash of blue, clean your brush very well, um, you'll be you'll be all right. The water that I'm using is really like, um, it's really quite murky at the moment. I'll give you guys a quick look at it, you know, but um, I'm still going to use it anyway. Uh, I find that um, yeah, as long as you keep the first, you know, you keep that, uh, put a lot of that water in there, it's, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll even out. So um, let's go ahead and get started on this drawing. And we kind of got to take a bit more time with this one in terms of the drawing, but I also don't want to spend all day with it. So hopefully, um, hang on, just bring up the reference photo so I can take a look. Um, okay, so I wanna cut this photo basically in half. Now where the buildings finish off and where this kind of wall is at the back, um, that's the bottom of the, 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 sort of the middle of the painting. So I'm just gonna draw a basic line like this, okay? Or halfway, roughly halfway through the page. Like that. Um, I've got to remind myself to draw a little darker as well. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and look at what's probably the easiest, the larger shapes that we can put in here. Um, we've got a kind of stepping, uh, little steps coming in this section here. There with, uh, you know, look at that, just a few little steps like that. And just start putting some of this in quickly there and we've got a step here there and uh, that comes down like this and what have we got another step here there there then we got another one uh, kind of coming out like this some kind of steps there that's probably the hardest thing that you're going to draw in the foreground this is all going to come in um, the side here um, come up here like that bit of a wall and um, this is not exact I'm probably gonna have to change this up a little bit but um, I think that's okay something like this the edge as long as it just looks like there's an edge of this, uh, this area that's fine there's even some stairs going down in that section like that Further back, you, you look, you really don't have to bother too much with all the details. Now, the good thing is that we've got these boats, a lot of these nice references that we can draw from. 
And um, I'm going to put this one in just like this, okay? Closer so it's pretty large. Um, there's a couple of, you know, kind of uh, areas in the boat like that. We they're going to be slightly darker, but most of it's really under light. Okay, it comes out more like this at the back. This one kind of comes out like this. With the pencil, you can always just correct your lines as well um, to something that looks a bit more accurate. Uh, that um, the shape of them is the most important thing. Just getting that shape of the boat. There's a little engine on the back. They overlap. You know, here's another one overlapping in a, a front of the boat coming up like this as well. And uh, that touches the ground, not the ground, the, the water. And, um, you know, this section here, this is the, the engine at the back. And uh, let's get in some of this, the, the little seats and things in here as well, like that. That's another one. We've got another one here. They all just overlap with each other. Okay. It's a bit of the, the, the uh, motor or what have you. Um, there we go. A bit of the inside of that boat like this. There. Okay. Um, and if you're stuck on the drawing, just remember, uh, just remember that, that we, <laughs> we're just drawing shapes. And I think... Uh, that to tank saying, she says, feel those details overwhelms me. Anxiety goes up. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I think that's why some people tune out of my videos. They turn off, they turn it off after, after I, 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 I after they see the reference photo. Um, but the, 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 the trick of this is, I, I just want to simplify it for you. I mean, this looks here almost like a child's drawing of these boats. It's just. It's look. It's kind of like bananas or something on the water. Um, I'm just getting the general shape of them in, okay. And to kind of make an impression or get the mind to see it as uh, interpret it as, uh, you know, seen with boats and houses and things like that. It doesn't require very much at all. You'll be surprised how little detail and how much how little that you need to actually define. Um, even the drawing here, it's it's not accurate. It's certainly not as accurate as the, as the, you know as the reference. There's uh, there's a lot going on in here that I haven't included. So you know, and I don't even need to do. See, I could probably put another boat here. You know, changing things up. The the um the point of a painting, I, I believe, is to have it stand on its own. Like it it shouldn't be something that you uh, compare to the reference. Um, all the time. I mean, I think it needs to. If you want it to look like seen with boats, of course, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna need to look somewhat accurate. But um, to draw a boat, it's really just kind of like a banana. And then this here is the engine, like that, you know. And the rest of it, as long as you can, you know, get your head around drawing one boat, you can draw the rest of them in. And they're not, you know, at some points I sort of start to zone out as well we're looking at all this detail going on and i'm like oh now where does one boat end and when where, where does the other one uh start okay we can work some of that out later but really you just want to get in some of these these shapes as they get into the distance it becomes easier to overlap them like that okay check that out it becomes a lot easier to overlap these like this you know, kind of going off in uh, different directions. There, uh, they're all just right next to the uh, this area. And there's some of them got you know engines and things on the back too. They come in all different colors. There's bits and pieces in them, but look at that. The simplicity of that. You don't need much more than than this for the boats. There are some here in the water. Just pick out a few that you like. You know, here's one like this. There's one. Um, probably could have defined that one a bit more, but that's okay. Um, you know, that's another one here. Maybe another one that's overlapping. They look like little teacups or something floating, floating on the water. Um, 
just think of them just as little shapes that you're going to cut around later to indicate that they are boats. I'm glad my uh, my computer's not hasn't played up yet. I don't know what happened last time. Cut out, and it sucks during these longer streams as well. The my my biggest nightmare is for it to crash, and then I can't recover the video. And um, you guys are sort of left in the lurch. So there we go. There's some boats and things. Uh, you know, some of these are just facing. They're just facing us, yeah? Just on an angle, facing us like this, okay? Something like that. Maybe I could even have a larger one here. I, I feel like they all look the same size, so why not have a bigger one closer like that? Okay, and another one. Okay? Something here, like this. Well, yeah, another one uh, somewhere here. Having a sense of this uh, increasing size as we get up to the front does help. Uh, one thing I have not gotten here is fig uh, figures. I'm going to put one in. There's one uh, figure just maybe walking into the scene like this. There. Another person. Maybe they're talking, hey? These two people are just talking here. This one's standing very close to the edge of the water. Let me just move that in a bit this. The eraser may come in handy for this as well. I just want this section to be more straight. More straight. Okay. That's much better. Um, there's just the extra level of um, accuracy required for stuff in the foreground. I have to use the eraser, then I'll certainly use it if I need to. Here's a, the arm of this person, the arm of that person. Here we go, another arm of this person as well here. Um, arms and legs, this person might be wearing shorts. There. Um, what have we got? Maybe we've got a, another person here entering the scene. Um, larger figure, like this. Maybe they're walking towards um, the camera, I don't know. Yeah, like that. Something like this. Um, this is going to give me an opportunity to get a, a shadow running across. So I don't want to get these building shadows, or at least I'm not intending to, not yet anyway. You know, as the figures get, as we go back further, the figures get smaller. Yeah, so this one here, and, and, and less detailed as well. You don't need to really stress about what exactly they look like. Just a head, some legs and have them overlap maybe with a few others. This is a pretty touristy area, apparently. Um, so we can get in, you know, just some figures and people here. And it's actually, it's actually much smaller. The people, the heads of the people back there are really small, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna do it this way. Um, I'm gonna war here. Uh, how, how you all doing? How you all doing, you? Um, you keeping up with the with the sketch and um again no uh, don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like the reference and um there's a comment there's a comment from um Marta Marta Fellani says hi just join now i love your painting so beautiful and vibrant i was wondering what kind of paper you're using and if you have any suggestions especially for sketchbook because I read that you're using lots of water uh, to get the result. Yeah. Um, so the paper that I'm using, uh, this stuff is is called Baohong. So they sell it in Australia. Um, it's 100% cotton watercolor paper. That's the main thing you want to look out for. Um, the brand isn't a huge deal as long as you've got cotton uh, watercolor paper. But, you know, use what you've got. You don't need it. Um, I paint with other papers that aren't cotton as well. Just that cotton works better in, in my opinion it just looks makes things a lot easier for you to get in wet and wet effects um, the sketchbooks that i use the one before i made myself out of this same paper but i do use etches etches uh, sketchbooks as well they've uh, given me some affiliate link which you can find in the, the uh, description of this video and you can get 10 percent off the sketchbooks they're sending me another one in the mail it's a uh what they call their perfect the perfect sketchbook which um 
quite quite a I'll if you hang around to the end I'll show you some of my my paintings and things like that in there but um yeah, you can you just as easily make your own as well it's just more for the convenience and they are they, they are quite pretty sketchbooks so put together quite nicely um let's have a look uh, oh and um and and yes I do use a lot of water I do use a lot of water for the first um for the first wash we're kind of I'm getting in a lot of wet and wet effects to begin with um and that's the most important part I think of the painting to get in those simple shapes and uh, the light in the scene so I hope that answered your questions Marta um and Marta also says, I reckon this, recognize this one. Uh, this place is very close to my hometown. And um, awesome. It's a place I really want to visit someday. <laughs> so you're, you're quite lucky to be able to um, live so close. I, I think in, I don't know, in, in Italy, there's just so many beautiful places uh, and, and just scenes to draw. And I really love buildings, um, complex buildings. And places where people are interacting, you know, walking around these urban sort of landscapes. So I find I tend to always pick all these um, Italian type scenes because it just ticks all boxes for me. So good to have you. Good to have you here. Um, let's have a look. Tony Green says, wow, you're still going strong. Is this uh, water scene the third sketch today? Didn't expect to find you live after my walk. <laughs> Did you, did you not expect me to not expect to, to find me still alive? <laughs> oh, I do need to eat at some stage. Um, but yeah, I, I'm still going, I'm still going. I did say that I'd do three, so uh, it's not not often that I do not often that I do three. And uh, people were asking as well, how long am I going to be doing these live um, live bits and pieces for? And um, Really, uh, I, I I will continue doing them. I'll continue doing them. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing like two or three of them a week, uh, but I'll at least continue doing one. That's the Saturday one. Um, I, I enjoy these. So I find that if I'm painting anyway, if I turn the camera on and have, um, you know, if I just turn the camera on, it's no big deal. I can answer questions and it's, um, you know, I find you guys keep me company as well. Great. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a bit of sketching now for these buildings here. Don't worry all too much about like uh, the little details of the buildings. Look at the sh look at the dark section of that of the buildings. It's just a big shadow. This whole area is pretty much going to be the same color. And then on top of that, we've got um, you know these these other buildings here, which have. Uh, you know, sections like that that come out. This this one that comes straight out to the front here. This is the biggest. This is the biggest building here. Um, comes down like this, and down like this, and then the side of it here is kind of illuminated in sunlight. There, a section here. More dark bits here. What have we got? There's a another bit here. Um, section here. This just goes all the way up into the sky, you know, and you don't need to draw everything in there to show what it is. Okay, so there's a few little white buildings there, which I will leave. Um, that's it. That's about all I'm going to do. Well, maybe not. Let's, let's get in some, how many floors are this? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know, I'll separate them out to put in some marks like this for the, uh, Windows. There's a window here. Another window here. You know, some flags here and stuff as well. Uh, maybe opportunity to put in some colors. Um, you know, these buildings here. They also have these little windows running through them. We can get them in. Then we've got this building here, right in the middle, smack bang in the middle. I'm gonna just uh, start off here like that. Bring that down here. Notice the way I kind of draw as well. I, I kind of draw in these jagged lines because I, I don't want it to look too stiff. You know, there, there, like that. See, I made a mistake there. Doesn't matter. Continue on. Just simplifying this down. There's actually a lot in this building that needs attention, but, uh, well, is demanding attention, but I'm not going to do that. This is part of the front of that building. There. 
I'm also going to get, uh, oh, maybe not. This shadow is not going to make sense. It don't start that high. So there's no shadow on the right side of that building, but I'm going to make one. I'm going to come in from that side. Kind of like there's these buildings crossing over a bit. There's shadow for this side as well. There. Yeah. It's just a little shading to remind me. Uh, just a reminder. Okay, we've got squares and things here for the windows. You know. I just draw, draw them in as uh, circles at times because it's easier to draw a circle. I, I think anyway, it's easier to draw a circle than just to draw a square um, to just indicate where they're, they're going. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost finished with the drawing. Um, we just got to finish up that left-hand side. There is a wall here as well. Um, people swimming. People swimming in here. And uh, we can do that detail later. I'm not going to really draw that in all that in. We're just going to finish that wall about here. Where does it then go? Kind of here. Um, these buildings probably need to be done first. Here. That sort of side of that building, like that. Um, but really, I'm just looking at patterns. Um, okay, that's a section there. Um, and it goes up like that. And we've got another building that cuts in front there. Comes across. Comes down like this. Here we go. That's a building there. A um, few bits in the front. That's a bit of a building sort of finishing off of there. 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 It's another bit. So I, I really just want to make sure that I can get the light in on these right hand side of the buildings. So these sections. Um, oh, what am I doing? Uh, the, the light on the left hand side of the buildings. So this is going to be where the light is. Um, and then the shadow here, a bit of a shadow here perhaps. Seeing how I'm going to do it there. Maybe exaggerate that a bit like this. Yeah, that looks okay. A little bit of a shadow in, in here, in this building. I'm simplifying down as well. There's actually a lot more complexity than this. Um, all this stuff in the background, this then becomes essentially just stuff I'm cutting out, cutting around. I'm not really going to bother in um, with all those little details. There's even stuff in here, in, in the in the mountains. Um, this tower. Now this is going to be a bit more challenging. Uh, let's see where we're going to do it. I'll just bring in this wall, this large wall here. Starting to rush. I've got to be, got to be more patient. Yeah, comes down like that. Then we've got this tower. Starts uh, right about here. Where does it finish off? We here. Just a kind of egg, an egg on top. That kind of hexagonal. And uh, top of the tower, there's some little bits and pieces, ornamental things around there. There's these little windows as well, like that. There, there's some more further down here, a couple more there and there. Uh, bring that further down. There we go, the tower, and um, some buildings coming in from the side, like this. You know, it's actually looking okay for the drawing. Um, some windows here and a rooftop like that. That there's then buildings that start to come in. Up the top here as well which i will just indicate lightly there but the rest of it is just uh, going to be mountain mountainous kind of region so you know here for example start here and then we'll cut around the um around the top of that tower come down here around this section here of the roof it goes up again we've got this sort of mountain sticking up then it comes down again disappears off into there and uh, we are pretty much done with the drawing I know it doesn't look like much yet but it's a good start for what I'm going to do with the painting so um, I'm going to actually draw some edges of this tower a little bit of the, that those edges um, this will probably be a bit looser certainly be, look, look a bit looser 
there's some bits in here in the mount and the mountains as well which we can just highlight get in a few things bits of buildings and that um, before we get started okay because these buildings going to go off into the distance a little bit um this is important this section i, I really the, the light in this um, painting is really going to make it so i have to i think the, the light especially on this building is going to be crucial um yeah and then on these ones too all right dust this off dust this one off and let's go ahead and get started um i will and let me have a, have a look i'll check the chats i think we are ready to to get started everybody um how are you doing with your drawing we've got a few people watching got about 20 something people on facebook and probably furiously sketching away um furiously sketching away and uh, I've got a few on YouTube as well. Um, so I'm going to show you the the way I approach the first wash, the most important bit. Okay. Now, I want a big brush. So if you've got a large mop brush like this, or you've got a, a large flat brush, three quarter inch, we want to use these. And what I'll do, firstly, is that I'm going to put in, um, let's have a link, what should we do? Put in some of the buildings, the colors for the buildings. You have to think a bit for this. I wanna use some yellow, some of this Naples yellow for some of these buildings. Just drop some of that Naples yellow in there, a bit there, um, just in places that you wanna get a nice vibrant color. I picked that straight up from the palette but I, I, I dilute it down just enough. Then we can go in a bit of yellow ochre, for example, here. Okay, a bit of yellow ochre. And I, I like Naples yellow. It kind of has a slightly pastel kind of color to it. I do like it. More saturation in some of the buildings. For example, here, this is more of a, definitely it's got a bit more orangey color in it, like that. So I'm going to go and drop a bit of that color in there, like this bit of burnt sienna whoops it's too dark remember very light colors only and you know if you want more saturation you can even put in some lemon yellow in areas i don't really recommend it because not not too much of it anyway because it can tend to overpower things and make it look too um too bright uh so just some of that you know and then later on down, um, you know, for example, this section, I'm just going to gray that down. Just pick up some of the grays on the palette. Just drop that in here like that. And look at that. It all just mixes nicely together. Okay. And I'll add in a little bit of water here so that it, um, yeah, so then we, we kind of have it waiting there at the end, that bead of water. Um, more color, more yellow up the top like this. Um, some of these buildings, they do need some burnt sienna in sections. So you have put in too much paint there, but what you can do, you can just lift off like this, and just continue on. So don't worry, you stuff it up. Um, there's some burnt sienna for this building, especially. It does need some, this is actually Italian burnt sienna, the name of the paint I'm using. Doesn't really matter. They're all, you know, manufacturers all use their own fancy names for things. Main thing you gotta look at is the, um, what pigment is it? The back, we'll list the pigment, PB, whatever. Um, notice what I'm doing is that I'm just trying to join this all up, okay? Warm, all this warm warmth running through the buildings. And I'm doing it so quickly as well. Um, and leaving a bit of space here for the figures as well, um, like that. Go down a bit more like this section, that's gotta be a little bit darker. Um, great. Now, let's have a think, what else do we need to do? The sky, we've gotta do the sky. Um, what I'm gonna do, now this is interesting because um, 
we're now going to have to be a bit more careful cutting around this these um, little shapes, but we can do it. Certainly can do it. Um, let's start off with some cerulean blue. Okay, in the sky, drop that in like that. Really light color. I don't want much in there at all. Probably ten percent paint. Okay, just drop that in and um, get the top bits out of the way first, and then as you move down here. You're going to blend some of it into the buildings, like that section there. That's a little bit of that building. Here, here, um, just dropping in a bit of this cerulean blue again. And we don't. We can even cut around some areas like this, like that. Okay, so some bits can kind of touch the sky. Some bits just leave white. You know, you don't have to paint everything. Something like that. Okay, and now as we move down the page. Um, what I want to do is um, pick up a bit of green. Now I'm going to use emerald green. Let's try that. How does that look? It's not bad. Um, let's drop that in. And I, I can get a bit of a softness going into the sky here as well. A bit of softness. Um, pick that straight off the palette. Okay, but it's I, I'd say I've added some water. Um, to it just then, so it's going um, a bit more diluted now. Okay, I kind of want this section at the back to blend um, blend into the sky a bit. I know in the reference it doesn't look that way. Um, it's got a harder edge, so so you can even look. We can add in that hard a bit a bit more of a harder edge like this um, with some darker paint, um, like that. But in this section below, it started already to dry, you'll notice, which is a good thing because what I can do is then go into it and cut around shapes. I'm looking at that reference photo as well. And this has started to go into the building. You know, lift off like that if you're getting a bit too much into the building. Okay, let's cut around. This actually comes down and goes in here into this section, um, whereas, uh, you know, some shrubs and things in this, in this bit. So I'm gonna just go through, get a bit of that in um, there, little round brush, and you can leave some white on like this as well um, to cut around these shapes. A bit more like that. You know, there's some blending and bits and pieces. I'll leave some of these rooftops in white sort of rooftops here. If that's one thing I've forgotten, I probably should have left some more in there. But uh, hey, what can you do? Bit of white in there. You can actually go in afterwards with some gouache. It's not the end of the world. Bring that down. Cut around these shapes like this. You know, a bit of that going through, um, just that green running through that section and blending, so important. Leave a bit of white in the center if you don't want it to really mix like that. Um, this section here, I really didn't want that to mix, but I'll just lift up there. Um, take a look back and kind of examine it. Uh, how does it look? Is it, um, is it working? Is it not? I think it is. I think I think we're safe for the time being. Um, another thing you can do, you know, if you get sections that you want to just sort of um, indicate some uneven textures, is you can just get your spray bottle and spray like that, and you um, get a bit of that mixing and uh, granulation maybe going on. I hope. And just seeing. Checking the darkness, the levels of darkness, is it enough? Uh, do I need to go more dark? You know, maybe a bit more in there. Like that. While the paper is still wet, this is the time to do stuff like this. You don't want to wait until later. Otherwise, it's going to look kind of disjointed. Now, um, I'm going to bring this area of the, the ground in as well. And it is this grayish color. I don't quite like it though. I'm, I'm going to add some Naples yellow to this and maybe some that warmer color in there. Just this grayish color doesn't appeal to me. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, you know, with these little umbrellas and things, you'll notice there's, there's also umbrellas in here, colored umbrellas. You can get them in after with a bit of gouache. I don't want to, I don't want to waste this um, uh, beautiful wash that we can get in. Okay, so just a bit of, oops, that's too much burnt sienna in here. I'll have to just deal with that. Some more Naples yellow. Okay, and um, I'm just going to get in all this yellow into this section. Naples yellow you can mix if you've got just a, a bright saturated yellow and just mix it with a bit of white gouache. You can get that color very easily. Something similar to that color anyway from what I, from how I see it. Um, I thought I'd put in a bit more of that burnt sienna um, in there too. This section here, I really don't want that to dry completely. I'm just going to re-wet that a little bit. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this wash down. I'm going to get a bit of a bit of color in that wash. Um, so let's pick up what we got. We've probably used my um, we use my flat brush. No, we use the number ten round brush. Uh, go ahead, use the round brush. Um, I'm going to mix up some cerulean blue with Naples yellow, and this creates a kind of teal, teal color. Same color that I want for this, um, this water. Okay, just trying to mix some of this up. Um, try that. How's that look? It's okay. Um, we'll continue on like this. There. And we'll have bits kind of like blending in, but a lot of it won't really be hopefully um there and just kind of carry that on there whoops I've kind of gone a bit too far in that section we will make do with that though um one thing i've i should probably do is add some more naples yellow running down that side the edge like that um and i and the trick here is that we just want to do one thing which is paint this whole section in this color while cutting around the boats this um that's why we left these shapes of the boats in before, so that we can um, cut them, cut around them, and get in those shapes. Okay, do that. You know, some bits can mix there, but we want to leave you know bits of white in there to show that there's an edge too. There, another boat um, here, here. Just cut around these ones. And we're going to do the same thing for these boats here in the foreground. But uh, use that tip of that brush like this around the areas of the boats like that. While this um, paint um, is still wet as well in the yellow, this is a great time to do it. Because you're going to get a nice soft look everything. It just blends nicely. It's all soft at the moment, and we're not trying to define any uh, details. We're not, you know, directly anyway. By cutting around the boats, that's what we are essentially um, doing a bit of negative painting. Okay, the details of that of those boats are being defined. Apart from that, everything else is just the same. As we move down the front of the painting as well, you're going to get um, to a point where we'll have to darken more. So. Yeah, just um, more of that water here, here, here. If I can just leave an edge, a white edge here, it'd be nice. At least in some sections. This is already dried anyway, I don't have to worry about it. Well, maybe not that bit. More cerulean. A bit more cerulean blue. And, um,. This is where I'm going a bit darker, a bit more Naples yellow and cerulean blue, but just a, a darker mix as we get up to the front um, to create more contrast in what's going on. Okay, and these boats and things here, there, 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 there.
Okay. In here. Join this all up like that. There. Got the paper on a slight um, slant as well that helps to shift the paint um, downwards. Okay. Um, Great, that's looking okay. I mean, the only thing I might want to do now is just to add in uh, using a little flat brush. Tiny bit of, tiny bit of um, yellow and green. A bit of yellow and green. Actually, we'll go with some darker bits of uh, blue in here. Let's try, just put in a few marks like that the thing with dropping in this darker paint it has to be thicker than what you're using uh, yeah it just has to be a lot thicker than what the, the water um the water area is so um, otherwise you'll get some blooms and weird effects that you don't really want so um, just a little bit of that and dropping that in will be nice to just emphasize some ripples and things on the water uh, which we'll get kind of, we may be able to get some more in later, just some darkness in that section. Um, last step before we kind of move on and do everything else, we're going to get in colors for the boats and, um, you know, having all this blue, it only makes sense that we pick some bright colors like orange. And, uh, so here's a bit of orange, a very bright, um, bit of orange. I picked that up from the palette just straight away like that. Um, oops, and I'll show you another little trick, you know, just leave little bits of, little bits of white on the paper as well so that it doesn't do that, um, all the time. So you can pick up a bit like that and just, um, finish it off there. Um, we'll try it again. So a bit of red and I'm going to just leave that section, just a little bit of a slither of white there and then continue on like this. So that way we have, uh, you know, no mixing into the into the water. Okay, see that one I didn't do it, so that's starting to mix. Um, you know, maybe some yellow for that one, brighter. Maybe some um, a very 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 light wash of blue. Let me see if I can get in a very light sort of boat like that. Something like this. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some uh, pink. Color ones here. Main thing is we want to keep this wash like very very light, with not much uh, not much paint in there, okay, except for maybe the the um, the warmer ones. More of that. Let's have a look. We've got some. Um, Let's have a look. We've got some blue also, just some light blue boats. And uh, again, the trick with them, it's almost the, the, the wash of water that you're using on there. It's barely, barely there. Oh, I've forgotten to get in a bit of this water here. Put it in quickly. But, uh, that's okay. Um, bit of coolness underneath that boat like that. Um, I want to get some orange in for this one. There. A bit of pink or something and blue. We can make a purple for that one. Maybe some more blue actually. Nice, that um, bit of color for that one up up here. Some of this will just blend in. We'll let it do that. Okay, those are the boats pretty much done. Um, you know we've got some of these boats here which we can also 
do the same thing for some of them. I, I, it's not necessary for all of them, but just some bit of color in them would be nice. Like that. Um, not too dark. Just keep it pretty light. Um, even lift off some paint here if it's going a bit too much. And uh, we'll continue on. And um, let's start putting in some colors for these figures. And uh, I think I'll get in some blue, cerulean blue for this one. The shirt or whatever. There um, we can go with some uh, yellow for this one. A bit of yellow. It's probably going to turn into green actually. That. And then we're going to go with a bit of red or something here. Red for this one. Just darker. That. Whoops. Too much. Here, a bit of color there. Um, a bit of blue, teal color, a bit of red, alternating between warm and cool. If we kind of go down the back as well. I'm just going to lower the, um, just make them a bit softer and um, less colorful. Like that. Okay. Great. Um, this is the bit where we're going to go in and actually start doing, uh, basically start doing um, all the shadows. And I really think this area just needs a bit more time to, to dry off. I might actually pull out the hair dryer and finish that bit off real quickly because I don't want it to, I don't want it to bleed or anything like that all over. Just feel the paper. Yeah, it's still kind of damp. We're just putting colors. What we need, just colors. Okay. That's an umbrella or something there. That's another one. Bit of yellow there. Um, I don't really know what that is. It's just color. Okay. Um, the heads of the figures, I will drop in some red and some uh, yellow mixed together to get a kind of uh, the skin flesh tones okay just look, something real basic like that um, here to look but a uh, notification what was that about I think I might have had a I think I might have had a donation. Oh. Oh jeez. Gallery. Thanks so much for the um for the for the donation. Um yeah, I don't know what to say. That's that's incredible. Um that's gonna go really far. 250, 250 coffees, that's gonna go real far in um in uh basically uh art supplies, so Thank you so much, Valerie. Just go through the chats real quickly. Jocelyn Steven says nice. Um, Yvonne says y Yvonne says thanks uh, for the info and in mixing rust and teal. Um, oh, I think she's already said that. Valerie says thank uh, thanks for all you do. Bought you a few coffees. Really appreciate it, Valerie. Are you uh, painting along with us at the moment, or just started started watching? Look through. I'm gonna continue, and um. You know, pretty much all these areas in the back, I'm gonna blend them in, blend them in kind of with each other. Get down further to the back. I'm gonna have a test. Let's. How about we just test out that area and see if it's dry enough to uh, get in these shadows? Because I think I don't know. It might be. Let's mix up some shadow colors first. I'm gonna grab. 
um, neutral tint, a bit of neutral tint, and I'm going to pick up a bit of a bit of blue, a bit of uh, ultramarine blue, and I, I want to get a kind of uh, bluish color in here. A nice sort of bluish color would be nice. Uh, purplish, purplish color. What am I talking about? Um, go on with this uh, neutral tint, purplish color. Okay, for the shadows, um, I like to use more of a uh, cooler color with all this. Okay, but we can also mix up one here that's a bit more of a, a warm sort of shadow color, which is ultramarine plus a little bit of burnt umber or raw umber. That can get you a bit of this kind of brownish um, shadow color. So I'm going to try this. Let's have a go. That's actually dried enough. We don't need to dry it off. I got a bit freaked out before because I thought um, it wasn't dry. But we want to cut around some of these shapes. Look at that. I'm just getting in the building um, that's in uh, up the top here first. Bit of that, bit of that there. But the rest of it, um, you know, for example, this section here. Uh, that's all just one color. It's all just darkness under there. Okay. And this actually comes out a bit like this. This is why, you know, if you don't get in all the drawing, you don't get the drawing in 100% um, in the first wash, you don't need to really, uh, initially, you don't need to really worry that much. As long as you've got a basic, um, basic um, indication of the reference in there. Because you, you're using the brush to kind of draw as well anyway. And this side of the building is super important. We just got to define that a bit more, like that. There we go. That's the uh, edge of that building. Um, I like to mix some other grays in there. This is too almost too purplish now. I'm thinking. Uh, let's get in a bit more of this color. Might even put in a bit of yellow um, in this as well to just interrupt. Interrupt a little. Um, this here is a side of a building like that. There. There. Um, and then we've got this kind of, we got this edge there for that shadow. Oops. Too much water. Um, it's okay. Bring it down. And. Um, some more neutral tint as I sort of get down to the bottom area I, I'm a bit more careful in terms of like um, being more sparing in, in terms of how much how many brush strokes I put in this section okay something like that we end it off we're gonna end that off like that um, in fact it's probably coming down more more like this yeah and we can have a couple of windows like that's just nothing it's just a couple of lines couple of dots there. Um, let's bring this over and I'm going to start cutting around some of the heads of these figures as well. Look, there's another head there of that figure. Um, cutting around here and uh, these ones here as well. Uh, a bit of color there. Um, all this stuff is just going to be a kind of dark color. And I'm also trying to get in a bit of shadow on a bit of light and shadow on some of these buildings. Uh, so I might leave even that bit of bit like that there. Coming down like that. Um, while I'm here as well, I might as well do some of the, the legs of the figures. Um, they're going to be darker. And I want these to kind of blend in a little bit to the into the figures. That bit of darkness like this there. Um, whoops. Got a bit of color like that. Ooh, have a look. Um. Another leg. The trick with these figures, we just we don't want to overdo it. Yeah, just um, 
get those legs in indication and then continue on um a little shadow as well maybe let's get a shadow here like that connecting up the legs there uh, for that one and uh, this one as well kind of running over to the left there um this one's sort of a bit loose here at the front i'm not too happy with that one but uh we may do a bit of darkness here. Um, here we go, and I'm going to go in with this. There is some kind of building here. Um, and I'm going to just put in the a bit of the darkness there. This shadow passed across that building. You know what might be good? I know I've used flat brushes in the past for this sort of stuff. We can pick up a flat brush and, and this will perhaps make things a little easier for some of these shadows. We do it all that often these days, but you know, a little shadow there, that side of that building. Um, just where we want to indicate um, or essentially a bit of detail, a smaller shadow I mean, and pick up a bit of Another color as well here and just drop in a bit of darkness at the base and I find this works quite nicely to also um, sh show the the edge of this wall here okay because we've actually believe it or not we've got some trees here which I haven't done but we can just put in you know a little indication there's a few few trees there and that helps to form the, the border or the edge of this wall as well. That. Um, we go. Uh, okay, yeah. um, using this same color, you're doing the little shadow and, and bits underneath here, so the top of that building there. Um, while I'm here as well, why not put in some of these darker bits of the the windows hey why not put in some of these windows um i'm just adding them in like that and i don't know how many floors there are how many there's four, there's four floors um something like this there and you know on the roof as well there's bits stuff in there there's a Oops, that's too much, but uh, we'll leave it there, there. You know, it's a darkness in here. This is a top of a roof of, of, of an area there as well. Didn't even realize. Um, I think what I'll have to do as well is perhaps, perhaps darken around the back a little bit more um, afterwards. Okay. Um, some more of this kind of shadow color and I'm going to put in a bit of that here this edge of the building I'm you know that this shadow isn't really there but I'm just gonna just want to exaggerate the that feeling of light um, also here on that edge of that building like this uh, maybe a bit here as well running through the center a bit here um, and then we can go in and you know pick up a bit of darker color just go in and add in some windows so that wanna let's see how dark do we want to go that's probably a bit too dark dry off that brush a little and go in this there yeah um Right. Um, this area of the dome, I want to put on some darkness running on the left hand side as well. Just a bit running down there and perhaps um, soften it off a bit in areas. That there. Um, have a look at some 
ഒരു അനി ഒരു these things the windows these are just little windows running through and um bits and pieces in here i will get some maybe some warmer paint and drop some of this in here too i think some warmer paint will be nice just a little bit um and i and i've still haven't forgotten my plan to kind of get in um extra bit of darkness here in the background where those trees are i feel that we've missed out on some of that It's just not dark enough now um, but we'll get in some of these figures the legs of these um, these ones kind of walking out walking around um, in the background here just getting them to mix in a little bit with the other ones too um, you know look, there's another one here's one here you know, there's one here um, maybe some imaginary ones are running walking through uh, shadows down that side but we want to leave some of that um, the darkness uh, sorry the light on the ground as well so um some red for the, the these areas of their heads i think would be good just a bit of that indication of where the heads are there you know some in the background as well like that um might as well do the step while i'm here steps bit more a uh, bit of shadow color running through section there and then we're gonna get this one here I'm scared from him and I thought I colored in the wrong thing there um oops more here Okay, maybe a bit there. All right, that's a bit of a shadow. Um, you know, also comes time to doing a bit of the detailing on the here, for example. That edges of this uh, area. little directional lines running through there would be nice too perhaps some um, darkness in this section as well indicate the the ledge that there okay i'm going to give myself another maybe 15 to 20 minutes to finish this one off um how's everyone doing so far i'm just having a look we've got uh comments uh the chats of um <laughs> where are we up to Margaret, um, Margaret says, thank you, Darren. This takes a lot out of me. Um, I'll finish these tomorrow. Can't help but say I love your work more on Saturday. Awesome, Margaret, um, your champ for hanging around this long. Um, you know, as Tony was saying, it's probably be probably a bit abnormal for, for, for someone to be painting for this amount of time. Um, I don't know why, but when I really get into stuff, I just don't really feel hungry or anything. And only afterwards when I realize, geez, I'm kind of kind of starving. Um, Gregorio, good to see you, Gregorio. Um, just popped in for a minute to say hi. Uh, good to see you here. You can always watch it later if you if you want to. Um, and thanks, yeah, thanks for the um, the compliment the painting i think it's it's going okay at the moment i'm still um not satisfied with a few things like the background i do want to make that darker as well with the trees um well i don't know maybe maybe not maybe in some areas i i, I like this blending of it up into the background so i may leave part of it let's see let's see how we go yeah 
Um, and um, Valerie says, Valerie says, um, I'm drinking, I'm drinking coffee and listening to you. Awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, hope, um, hope this is, uh, you're enjoying it. And there's actually, you know, I've done this scene a little while before in the past, probably about nine, maybe like nine or so months ago. And sometimes it's good to revisit these scenes when you feel like, you know, there's something you could have done differently or, you know, just something that you wanted to explore. So um, I did this because of that and also because it was suggested by um, someone as well. Um, what was her name? Ellen. Um, Ellen Whitney. So... Let's continue on with this and we had a bit of, you know, got a bit of shadow here as well um, on some parts of the wall like that, um, areas like this, just touch and go really. Uh, it's not all, not all that much because we've got um, quite a strong indication of sunlight. So um, a lot of this stuff is just going to look pretty bright these are just some areas of the of the windows and that sort of stuff underneath here i can just dry brush dry brush in a bit of texture for the wall like this there maybe a bit of a line there a bit of dry brushing here as well here there are little bits and pieces that kind of stuff um you know, up, up here in the buildings um i'm gonna get in a few little brush strokes that's too big but um make do there just a bit of shadow underneath you know some parts of that roof um rooftop or what have you there uh that's actually an area where we've again we've got this um got those trees that are sticking out so um I'm kind of thinking what to do i'm a bit um puzzled here you know what I, every time i sort of think like that I, I i just go and do it because otherwise i always i always wonder what it's going to look like yeah so just put in a bit of green here i'm gonna just kind of spread a bit of that out to to make it um move up a bit more but the point of this is so that i can um, get some more contrast on the rooftops and things um in some of these areas uh, I don't want to, yeah, I don't really want to overdo it as well, so I'm just being quite careful. Mm. Yeah, a bit of the colour in there, a bit more contrast. Like that. Okay, I think that looks... I think that looks a little better. I don't know. It looks a little better. The, the, the point of this was I, I want to make the buildings just pop out a bit more. And the, there are these, uh, what do you call them? These trees in the background. They just look a bit too soft in areas. So I thought, well, you know what? Let's put in a bit of paint in here. And I was worried to get rid of this lovely wash, um, especially up the top. I kind of come to a bit of a compromise where I've uh, yeah I've kind of done both really where I've got a bit of um, a bit of that softness on top um, softness on top and then at the bottom I've just darkened down a little bit wet into wet yeah a bit of more color in there Creating more contrast. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to put in some some more details um, in these. Just seeing if this is dried yet. It's kind of dried. Bit up. Bit of this uh, black. Not black, but it's uh, basically neutral tint, which. Uh, looks essentially like black in um, high concentrations like this. 
I'm just going to drop some of that in. I'm going to dry brush it on actually in, in um, as much as I can. There, there, like that. Um, some of it, this stuff here at the top is too, too awkward. I'm just going to get that in quickly. Um, put some of this in here. Just let it blend in, yeah? A few little marks like that. They really go a long way to indicate some details. So, a bit there. There's actually a bit there as well. Some more here. Putting in some little marks. Yeah. Maybe just wipe off that brush a little bit and get in a few more. There. Ooh. Looking, looking all right. Um, now the boats. I haven't forgotten them. A bit of darkness for these engines at the back. Uh, we don't have to get all that in for all of them, but I think some of them it would be nice. And really just the insides of them. Um, we're going to indicate some, um, some of the detail. So where you got the pencil, just outline in some parts, especially down inside the boat too, where it could be darker. Okay, like that. There. Um, See here, the, the paper hasn't been sized properly in that corner, so that's why we're getting this weird sort of rough effect in there. So, if you... okay, um. I think what would be nice as well is just a bit of darkness in the ground, uh, not the ground, but the uh, the water. The darkness in the water, um, just around the boats, especially just underneath the boats, too. Um, I'll, I'll put in some blue, some ultramarine as well. Some to get some of these little uh, ripples and things. They're not in the actual reference photo, but I. I I'm putting them in because I want to um, create more contrast for the boats. Okay, so even here in the background, we can do the same thing there. And this is the ledge actually, so I want to want to kind of go too high up there. These are just little. Think of them as just little ripples on the water. Okay, little ripples that we're putting in here. Look a bit of. Uh, Bit of this well coming through like that underneath this boat we want to get some of that lovely blue color to show through underneath so the trick is is not overdoing it um you know as i move up i'm going to stand up now i'm actually sitting down while i'm painting i have to got the recording on um, and uh a few little marks in the water like this i don't want to overdo it down in the distance but um here and there we just want to drop in a bit like that okay so that we've got not only do we have the wet on wet sort of ripples underneath but we've got these darker ones as well okay and, uh, some of these boats have a little bit of a little bit of darkness underneath too yep that's right. And, uh, maybe a little actually, a reflection that runs down further. Um, the further back some of these boats are, the more that you can kind of get away with not putting enough, um, putting much detail in there. Um, it does help kind of standing up now to actually see these, see these boats as more of a, a combined shape, um, and to just add in some more of these lines and things like that as well. Okay.
a bit of the water here that just comes forward like that near the harbour. Um, more darkness. Maybe some more. This is just pure neutral tint that I'm picking up. But I'm going to outline that person's leg more. It just looks like there wasn't enough in there. Straighten out this one too. Stuff in the foreground just needs a bit more going on. This could be a bag here. Yeah, could be a bag or something there. Um, the little people in the back, they're not as, you know, as important, but you know what I mean. They're kind of, um, don't need to really detail them as much. You know, the rest of it is just little, little indications of what you think might be there. I mean, even, for example, windows here of this tower, fairly dark. And there's, oops, there's one, there's one there, here. Here, um, like that. Bit of the the ledge and the side of it, like that. There. Um. There. Um. Areas of darkness and things behind, like that. There. bit more in the buildings um, I mean even the stuff here in the background there's not all that much to put in there it's just uh, bits and pieces um, got some gouache that I can use to, to finish this one off and afterwards as well I'll, I'll probably um, after this I'll, I'll probably work on it a bit more but this is just what I was trying to do um, with the gouache I like to pick up a small brush just get some pure white gouache you can put in a little water in it and let's look at some areas of white that we want to get in um, you know it could be here on this figure for example a bit of white on the shirt and the it just indicates some of the highlights of the uh, of the sun and the light sort of hitting the heads and shoulders of some of these figures like that okay bit on the bag here as well that this figure is holding I don't want to make them all the same though so um, I'll probably put some hair in on some of them later you know even in the boats you notice there are these little pretty calm Thingamos, ropes, there, um, yeah, but connecting them up a bit, even on the side of this boat we've missed out a few of these little, um, what do you call them, little floaty thingos. Uh, there we go, bit of colour there. There. And anywhere that you think you'd like a highlight, just um, drop in that paint. In, in here, in fact, there's some little, I don't know what they are, but there's like um, little bits and pieces in there which go up into the distance, which I, I need to, I need to add them. I mean, well, not need to, but they help to actually break up that large shape. Um, are they poles or something? Looks like maybe they're light poles and people go up the top there to, uh, you know, climb. Uh, I'm just really trying to str struggling to see what else I can put in here. Um, 
you know, we can get some brown or something and put it in for the hair. Some of these figures, I think that would be nice. A dark sort of brown color or something like that here. This figure might have some hair there. Whoops. I've just got, look at that, I've just got a whole bunch of um, sap green on my arm, my hand. Uh, just wipe it off. Place is a mess after I finish painting. Big mess. Uh, okay, I'm happy with that. A bit more hair, actually. Maybe darker as well. And and the paint I'm using is just really um, very dark colors. That. Okay. This could be a, like a bag or something. Yeah. Do have a bit of her arm sticking out there, which is nice. Uh, maybe a sleeve. Collar. Another sleeve here. Like that. Um. Hmm. I have to put in a few little marks up here as well while I'm at it. That. And I've forgotten there's actually some little windows on the side of that building too. Windows everywhere, all over the place. Not go crazy. Um, and I'll put in some birds to finish this one off. What time is it? It's 9.30. It's been three and a half hours. That's not bad for three paintings. There we go. The little bird, they're just kind of like V's in the sky. Little V's. And, and notice how I picked up on those little uh, highlights. I've got bits of white. Here and the on the paper or or kind of areas where I've accidentally spilt some uh, paint, and I can turn them into birds. And um, what this does is that it brings everything closer together in terms of the sky, the um, the background. Um, because we've got all this background here, but you know, how does it connect to the buildings? How does it um yeah, basically join up with everything else. This is the way you do it. That's a bit too much, that bird, but whatever. Um, some of the birds that are closer, or, or kind of through here, you can pick up and just put in a bit of white. Like that. Um, this could be a bird that's flying through um, this section. This. Again, this helps to break up that shadow so that we've got more stuff in here, a few little white strokes of running through the water, kind of like reflections, I suppose, sparkles of the running through. And that's too much. You, you know, you it's kind of just um, having just the right amount of control and just the right touch. And you're layering all this stuff over. Okay, all right, uh, let's take the uh, tape off and see what it all kind of looks like. I think you guys can already see it fine. Uh, what do you think? What do you think? Um, do you like it? Um, and how are you going with yours? And um, how did you find my explanation and some of the techniques? Did you have fun? learning um some of the techniques I, I taught you through this as well and practicing some of these is uh i'd love to hear from you oh there you go um can i bring the camera back i don't know if i can bring the camera back a bit uh, no.
just check out the um bring this back a little okay I think that's a decent decent sort of shot of it um jeez mess it's a mess around here got all stuff lying around all over the place um so I, I really hoped you you got something out of this one i hope you enjoyed it um thank you again ellen whitney for um the suggestion um to to, to paint this one um i really appreciate everyone who's watching and and um and and just the support it's been really it's been really unexpected when i started this about a year ago but um even at this point here when i've got a you know i've got people watching and um learning you, you know i'm really really appreciative of of that and um appreciative of that that you you know spend your time um watching as well and i and um you know to my to some of my supporters on patreon and um buy me a coffee and stuff like that i mean these are pretty much these are these are free but it's always nice um i really appreciate it um to, to those of you guys who who have sort of supported me in that manner as well so um thank you so much everybody i'm gonna have a look at the chats i'm just so happy that my computer hasn't crashed because last in the last stream it crashed i think two times and i nearly lost it i was gonna just throw it Throw the towel, throw in the towel. So I'm going to have a look what what um, to see if there's any uh, chats going on. Um, so Mona, I think Mona's um, commented in the other chat. She says, uh, thank you so much for these, Darren. I need to go now, but I will finish the paintings after today. Awesome. Um, let me just have a quick look at the other chats. Um, who's still watching? And if And if you are, let me know. All right, it's just taking me a little while to to bring them up. I've got all, all these windows open up at the same time, so um, yeah, I've got all these windows opened up at the same time, so it's just kind of confusing for me. But I'll, I'll get there. Uh, and Nerida Nerida says I'm still painting number one. <laughs> uh, you'll, you'll get there. Um, don't overthink it, Nerida. Um, yeah, but you know, at the same time, you know, just go by what pace you feel, what or what kind of pace you feel works for you. There's no, there's no like specific way to to paint all these scenes. Um, you kind of just gotta uh, find your own sort of way. Uh, there's a few things I, I'll have to fix up here. This the staircase is not dark enough. Um, a few other little details I do want to add in there as well. There's a comment from Tony, quite a challenging painting, this one, but it's coming together nicely. Well done, Darren. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Tony's, um, I think, Tony, you're a member of the other Watercolor for Beginners, um, and, and, you, and you sort of, you know, you teach as well on there. So um, good, to see, good to see you around and, um, you know, appreciate your comments as well. Tan Mei Ting, love your paintings. Thank you, Tan. And um, how did you go? How did you go with uh, with this one? And also, how what do you guys think of these sessions? Are they too long, um, or are they helpful for you in terms of the the, the duration of them? Um, I mean, I kind of you as well. I kind of use them as a bit of a personal challenge. See how long I can kind of paint without going nuts. But um, uh, but let me know any feedback that I can run these better, and any way that I can explain explain things better for you. Um, that's a really uh, beneficial thing for me because I kind of don't know. I kind of don't know um, unless you guys give me feedback. Uh, so that's uh, let's have a look. We've got in. YouTube, there's some chats here. Um, so Matt, Matt's got a couple of comments. I'm just catching up. I'm kind of inspired with this painting. Uh, there's so much going on. I hope the video will be on after you finish. Um, 
yeah, the video is going to be on. Don't worry, I won't. Uh, I'm I'm never going to remove these ones. So, uh, the these will all, these will stay free. Like I've actually, um, I've changed what I was doing. Usually, what I do is that I make all these into little courses, and I put them online, um, on Patreon and stuff like that. But now I'm just trying to do a lot more free content. I think I just have more fun doing it this way. Um, the interaction coming from you guys and just knowing that I'm, um, you know, helping you improve, like it's just so much more rewarding. I mean, I still have courses and I'm still going to release them on Patreon and stuff like that every month, but I, um, you know, I want to continue doing these more uh, as, as well because, um, you know, the feedback I've got from everyone, it's it's been great. So uh, Matt's also saying I would also be interested in the finishing touches you give with pen to your paintings yeah so what i'll do i'll um i'll upload these i'll scan them and upload them to uh you uh what's it my instagram and also to uh facebook later so if you like if you follow me on that on those you'll be able to see it later and i'll, I'll talk a bit about the, the the bits of pen and maybe the additional bits that i add in um Philip, another great one. Thank you. Appreciate you being along, Philip. Um, I hope that you, you know, I know this is very early for you. I, I, I kind of kept that in mind for a few of you guys who were watching because, you know, last time I'd finished around 10 something. And um, I don't know, you probably oh, half of you were asleep. And v Valerie says, what amazes me is that you managed to paint all of that without sticking your hand on wet paint. I think I do that on every painting I do. It drives me mad, although it actually improves them. Um, well, actually, I did get a bit of... I did, like, dunk my hand in some green before. So, um, <laughs> yeah, oh, that's what you said. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, spoke too fast, really. Um, I, I this is what I do. So like I, I don't have enough pans in here to put the paints. So I sort of just uh, let me see if you can see this. So what I do, I just squeeze the paints directly onto these wells. Yeah, I, I and essentially I only use about like two or three of these wells to paint. These are I, I I could probably do with just one or two of them to be honest. Most of the mixing I allow to happen on the paper, and I, I kind of dunk the brush in water, and then. And then I and then I, I mess around and and um, dry the brush on some on a on a piece of cloth, and then I go back in. So actually, I don't spend too much time here in the palette. If you guys look, I mean, mostly it's just to pick up paint and gather like a large pool of it if I need a large pool of it for an area. But a lot of it I'm just picking up and painting straight on there, which is how I manage to get areas of like um, high high vibrancy and things, so that it just stops the paint from mixing because. I never, I never clean my palette, I, or I rarely clean my palette, and I've, I've got these four wells here, and I know at some point these everything is just going to mix together into the same color. So I've just developed this technique of picking things up straight from the palette. I dunk the brush in water, and then kind of like test it here. And if it's too dark, I grab quickly grab some more water, dilute it down. If it's too light, I quickly go back to the palette, pick up some more, and dunk it in there. Um, look. It, it it may there may probably be better and more efficient ways of doing things, but that's the way I kind of I kind of do it. Um, let's have a look at the comments. Yvonne says, "Love it. Always amazed how the little details bring it together. It's it's amazing, isn't it? And you kind of like the first step where you're just putting in all the all the light um, colors. It it doesn't really look like much, and then later on." you kind of um you, the moment the shadows come in in some of the windows suddenly it it starts appearing like looking like something but actually i'm i'm really close to the painting i'm like you know 30 centimeters away and looking really close it it honestly doesn't look like much it's only when you sort of stand back then your brain interprets it as that um i like to paint in a in in that sort of impressionistic style um, like this, I mean, it still looks kind of like what it's meant to look like, but at the same time, I like to put my own sort of um, flair onto it. It's kind of like writing, like calligraphy, brushstrokes. You know, it's uh, I just like having my own 
feel to, to it um, rather than just copying uh, the reference picture exactly. And um, let's have a look. Valerie says, watching V. Uh, good to see you here, V. Um, they are not too long. Um, so v, uh, v is just saying in terms of these sessions, uh, they're not too long and they're real classes for me. I come with that mentality. Yeah. And um, look, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that offer these classes like, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't, um, you know, I, I hope that I can do this as a full time job one day, but I, I have a full time job. I do this. I do this because I, I enjoy it. Um, so although I have some courses and things that I do put up for on Patreon and course websites and stuff like that, um, most of this stuff is, it's here, it's available for free. And if people want to, you know, look at the courses or, or buy some of them, yeah, they're, they're always available, but pretty much everything I, I show you here is, is what I go through in the courses just with different kind of, um, uh, what do you call it? Different, um, reference photos. Maybe I, I use themes as well. I use themes like maybe uh, atmospheric watercolor painting was the last one. I also have a sketching class that I, I, I'm working on at the moment. Um, awesome. And uh, have you been watching all the all the way through V? I haven't didn't hear from you from the start, so I was wondering if you were if you were around. Matt says I appreciate these sessions. Uh, Matt R, um, one or two paintings a time will help us catch up with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I, I don't know what it is but i feel like if i'm on a roll with something if i've you know started uh, and, I, and i'm in the mood i just want to carry that on and i think starting a painting is probably the hardest thing to do and um yeah just mentally preparing yourself at times but so i, I take the least amount of steps um to prepare myself to paint that's why i've got you know, I, I do these little sketches and things, something real quick to warm up and um, end up with a little, uh, a little something, a little something there at the end. So I quite like this one as well. That one only took me about 30, 25 to, to yeah, about 25 minutes to do. So um, it's a different subject. I don't normally, I've never painted this one before, but I did this for um, a, a Santorini line wash one. So pick a subject and pick something that, um, and give yourself a time limit of like 30 minutes or something. And, um, and, and, main, and also in your mind, tell yourself, Hey, I don't care how it turns out. I just want to learn. I just want to paint this and see how it goes and have fun doing it. And in the process you learn the best way to learn is to have fun. When you are looking at something and you're like, um, and in your mind, you're thinking, oh, Jesus is, I've got to get it looking really good. I've got to, you know, compare it to this artist or whatever. It's, it's going to be tedious for you. So always, um, remember the reason why you're painting and, um, keep that with you when, when, when you do. So, um, I've also got a, a, a few little sketches I posted up before. I wanted to show you guys as well. Kind of, I was experimenting with a few of these last night. Um, have a look. Valerie says, I never, okay, qu quoting me, I never clean my palette. Well, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, probably don't need to explain with this. With this, um, I, I probably drive some people insane looking at it. I don't know. You're probably, people are probably wondering how the hell do you, how the hell do you paint anything with this? But, it's, it's doable. Somehow I, I make it work. Um, v says, yes. Um, I, oh, we put, put my back out in a fall when putting my desk together. I'm having to lay down um, away from my computer with my headphones um, to hear you as I watch. Uh, we'll be on my feet again a few days, I hope. Um, I'm really so sorry to hear that, V. That sounds terrible. Um, yeah. It's, I guess sometimes these things happen. Um, just take care of yourself. I, I don't know what else, I don't know what to say. That's, um, that's, uh, that sucks, but I do hope you get better. Um, <laughs> and I, I, do, I can't believe you're still watching in <laughs> with the headphones on. <laughs> I appreciate it. Really do. Um, cool. Uh, 
Let's have a look. Sketch your sketchbook. Go to scans in my slide show viewer. Yeah, I put my scans up as well. You can use those. Um, I, I usually just have the scans up for people um, afterwards. So they're, they're all in the discussion sections of the um, of the actual uh, uh, event after. So you can have a look at it. Um, yeah, if that helps. And Valerie says, um, when you showed your palette as a painting, actually, when you showed your palette as a painting, it would be aesthetically pleasing. Do you mean like having a separate camera for my palette or just showing, uh, just showing it like a, a, a larger view of it kind of thing on the side? Because I only use one camera, but I can like, I can get another one and maybe attach it somewhere. Um, because I know some other artists do that. So if you guys feel that might be helpful for you, I can... You know, I can try to figure something out. Uh, Matt says, thanks for ask, answering my questions. Thanks for sharing. Uh, thank you, Matt, and um, appreciate you being here and watching. Hope to see you next time as well. So do these every week. Now, anyway, do these every week, and um, I try to keep them around the same times. Um, these Wednesday ones are just a, a bonus one that I do uh, during the week because we're in lockdown here in Melbourne. But, you know, let's see how we go. I, I, I'll probably continue doing them. Um, value says just a freak thing, a freak accident, never knew how painful it was, um, too young for it to happen. <laughs> yeah, um, I can't imagine pulling a desk and like stuffing my back up. I go to the, you know, usually, usually I go to the gym every day, so I feel pretty fit, but you, you never know what can happen. Actually, it, you know, last lockdown, I, I stuffed up my neck of all things by, um, I have some gymnastics rings and I sort of, um, hang them off a chin up bar and I was trying to do, you know, don't know what I was, don't know what I was thinking, but I was trying to do some, some, uh, difficult kind of movements. And then I pulled something in my neck and it still hurts today. So that's, that's like almost a, you know, year and a bit ago. You just got to take care of yourself. Um, yeah, you never know what happened. V says on Facebook, the scans, I mean, are those on Facebook? Yeah, uh, the scans of my paintings are on Facebook of all these lives. Um, yeah, I put them up in the discussion sections of the event. Uh, yeah, I kind of upload them on on there. But if you want, I can kind of think about, yeah, I can probably put them on YouTube as well. Just upload them in, in the community tabs. That's helpful. Um And Valerie says, sorry, my punctuation, my punctuation. Now, if you painted a picture of your palette, it would be aesthetically pleasing. You show me the palette full screen. It was beautiful. <laughs> wow. Um, hey, look, um, I, I guess it does look kind of interesting, right? Yeah, I, I, I would, I would do that if I was interested in it. Um, I, I find like if, um, if I if I paint things that I'm not like a hundred percent keen on on painting, I just get lazy. I get real lazy, and um, but I've got to get rid of that habit. You know, I've got to start painting things out of my comfort zone more. I do a lot of landscape paintings. I do. I also do portraiture as well. Portraiture could be something that I could go through too. Um, I just find portraiture a bit stressful, to be honest, because everything has to be very you know, tip top correct and um, accurate. When you're looking at portraiture, you, you know, it's not like you know drawing a rock or a boat where they can come in a million different you know shapes and sizes. People are so unique in all their facial features, even just a tiny um, bit off in terms of the eye. The distance between the eyes can change the look of a person completely. Um, and uh, just having a quick look. At the at the comments, um, Alice Alice uh, Valeros says thank you, uh, thank you Alice, um, and uh, some compliments here as well. Really appreciate it. Um, and Marta Marta Polani um, says thank you very much. This is uh, nice and useful. Awesome. Glad you glad you um, glad you find it found it helpful. And uh, look, there is there's a few more comments. Um, a few more comments. Tony Green says you're doing a good job and helping lots of people to get started. Keep up the good work. 
appreciate it, Tony. It, it does help when you're having fun doing it, you know. I, I certainly can't think of many other things where I can sort of sit down for this many hours, um, paint, do something, and talk without getting um, getting a bit bored. But that's one of uh, that's something I've realized about myself. Um, over time, I, if I get really interested or obsessed with something, I can just sit down and do that for pretty much the whole day, and I'll forget to eat and things like that as well. So, on one hand, it's good. On the other hand, I've got to watch it too. Um, Vivian, true, great painting looks complicated yet very organized. Yeah, um, the the little details, the, the the little details, as long as you've got them roughly in the right place. Um, for example, there's four floors and these windows are roughly around in the same spot, but the windows are not shaped exactly like windows. It's still going to look like them. Your brain's just going to interpret them as windows. It just shapes everything in, in the world. It's, it's just composed of shapes. Um, I, I've got a lot of, in, in here, put a lot more colors as well, a lot more um, vibrancy than there is in the reference photo. Usually it's not going to look as exaggerated as, as this. It's just something that I've decided to, to put in there. Back in here, I think there's too much orange. I'm going to go through and darken one of them down to something else later if I get the time. Uh, if I get the time to do it, um, let's have a look. Nerida, Nerida says, "I had fun painting the first scene. Thanks for your valuable three hours. Appreciate it, Nerida. And um, you know, you, you're regular. You're always coming in every 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 week, and I can already see, um, you know, in your in your drawings and your paintings." Um, you're definitely a lot more confident with applying color, um, and and I and I hope the tips have been helpful for you. And Nero says I like the bright colors in your fore foreground boats. Awesome, thank you. Um, Joe Van Tonda says thank you for this. I really learned a lot. Appreciate it, Joe. I think you're new here, um, and uh, good to have you. Good to have you around, and um, hope to see you. Hope, hope to see you again next time. If you've got questions, just let me know. As well in the chats. Um, Nathalie says, very nice subject to paint. Unfortunately, had to attend some work emails, but will def definitely be giving it a go. Um, attend to some work emails. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's have a look. There, there are a few chats. Um, there are a few chats in in the in YouTube as well. Um, I, I, if I can ask as well, for those of you guys who are still hanging around, if you if you um, would be able to share this around, if it's helped you, just share it around on Facebook, on like groups, um, you know, to people in groups or just your friends and things like that that might enjoy it. Um, I'd really appreciate that. It just helps get my stuff out there. If you've got like um, suggestions as well on what you want me to paint, um, I'm also happy to take, take them on. Um, so little chats, lots of little chats there. I've got Adam as well. Here going, Adam. Thank you. Great work. And give us a homework week. <laughs> homework, yeah, that's actually a good idea. I never thought about that. Um, yeah, let me write that. I'll write that one down. I, I have like a little set of notes here. Um, I take down in case people make suggestions. Homework week. Um, maybe I could give you guys like a... Maybe I could give you guys like scenes that I've painted before and you try to replicate them with the reference photo or something like that. Um, I'll have to think about it. Um, Adam says, always good to follow along. Thanks, Adam. Um, I know it's pretty late for you. So like sleep, you know, Adam, you usually sleep very, um, very late. Uh, early, I mean, you sleep real early. Mm. Okay, thanks, Valerie. I think Valerie's going. Um, let's, let's have a quick look. Uh, on the serious side, my real question is, what is the best advice you give to a perfectionist who is struggling to paint, um, to paint loosely? Um, hard to say. Uh, hard to say. I think um, I'll have to think about that. But yeah, usually, usually, um, what what I like to, how I like to think of painting is it should stand separate from the reference photo. 
And what, what I mean by that is that if you have a picture of the, if you have a picture uh, of the reference and then you've got a picture of the painting, um, they, they shouldn't be really compared to, to one another. Maybe in the sense of, uh, you know, general, general aspects like tone, uh, you know, if you're really trying to replicate um, a scene or a landscape, but um, there should be a different feel to the painting and there should be changes to it. And the more you change and the more you alter, I find that you then take your, you, you kind of view this separately from the reference. Um, so I make a conscious effort to change things up, um, paint pretty, pretty quickly in areas, try different effects and things like that. And then when I look at the reference, yeah, it kind of looks like it, but at the same time, I've put a bit of myself, put my own, a bit of my own flair into it. So that's that's a bit of advice that I have, I guess, I can come up with on the top of my head. Um, this is not realistic. I start off great and never stop painting. Painting it to bring out more details and end up with a disaster. Um, cool. Good to see you guys kind of chatting. Um, and uh, just just to finish it off, I'll show you a few little bonus ones I did last night. Um, a few little bonus ones I did. Uh, so I, I have a water soluble ink pen. It's uh, this one here, Lamy, that I bought probably about ten years ago. And I've been trying to get um, some very quick kind of abstract paintings done. Um, yeah, I kind of showed this this one last time. This was kind of my first attempt in this little um, book. It's not really, uh, you know, it's not really proper watercolor paper though. It's cotton, but it's not sized, so you can see this kind of weird um, bleeding and uh, the pa the the paint is also a little bit opaque. I've added some opaque paint in there. That's one I did yesterday. Just a real quick sketch. Um, I'm not so keen on this book actually. Um, I just feel like it doesn't hold um, the paint as nicely. This is a little sketch I did of the kind of lily pads and a couple here sitting, maybe having a picnic. And um, the whole purpose of this was just to get in um, some of these lily pads. And um, I wanted to try out that technique. I've done something like this in the past, but. I painted all this in one wash. So I did all the green first quickly, and then I went and did all everything else, just let it blend together. So these kind of one wash paintings um, is something that I've been trying to uh, work on a little bit more in terms of my, you know, in terms of my, my own style, um, develop something different. I can't remember what this place is called. Um, uh, maybe it's the Arc, Arc de Triumph, maybe in, um, in Paris, uh, I think that's what it's called. But I, I sort of had drawn this in before, and you can see, um, you, you, you know, with this water soluble ink pen, it runs, but then you still get an impression, a very light impression of the previous um, line in there, which I thought was very, very interesting. It's kind of a, a subtle um, bit of detail there. That leaves just enough detail for these loose to be able to get away with these loose washes and colors running around. Um, what do you think? What are you know? I would like to hear what you think of these these ones, or whether you'd like me to do some videos on these. I actually recorded some of them, so I, I, when I get some time, I'll put them up on YouTube as well if you're interested. Um, also got this quick one I did of Melbourne yesterday. Uh, yeah, just a really quick little line and wash. These only take about 20 minutes to do. So um, I think we're pretty much at the end. I think we're pretty much at the end. Um, I need to go grab something to eat. Um, v says it's great for abstract paper. Uh, it's great as abstract paper, though. Look at those again in a week or so because you've got – it right with three colors style. Um, adding that purple kind of looked, uh, kind of took it out of the ballpark for creating a warm mood. But the yellow and blue are right. Cool. Um, yeah, something something different. Yeah, I, I really I really love wet and wet watercolor painting. There's just um, 
I don't know. It's just something that you can't do in any other medium. You can't do this in oils or acrylics. Um, just the effects on here are incredible. Uh, I, um, the random effects and things that can happen with watercolors. I think there's something magical about it. That's uh, certainly understated. Very understated. That I'm only I'm only just beginning to to grasp. Um, and that's why I, I, I sort of called myself watercolor mentor not watercolor master because i may or may not get there one day but i'll certainly um i'll certainly try i'll certainly try and perhaps i'm sure i will at, at some stage if i keep doing what i'm doing and if you guys um keep practicing and keep staying consistent and you're, you're loving what you're doing you will eventually you, you'll eventually get close to to mastering something or at least um or, or may get there so Let's have a look. Uh, I don't think there's any more chats in here. Um, there's only about how many people left? Oh, there's about um, about fifteen or so, twenty people in. Appreciate you all being here. Um, I will uh, finish this one off and um, talk to you next time. Thank you.